Welcome back to Kind of Funny's MCU in review. Welcome to where it all began. Of course, there's I'm a problem. Guys. There's a problem. <laughs> help, help. Confetti. Confetti. The sky still. By the way, Nick, we were talking yesterday about the confetti that was up there. There's a ton up on top of the. Oh, there the it flat. is. Look on uh, top of the flag. Happy yeah, birthday! <laughs> yeah, we got one. We got one stuck in a mover. That was making that. That was what was making that buzz. Was like, <laughs> Kevin's like, I think a mover's going down. I was like, Oh, I think it's just the confetti. Oh, oh man. man! Well, here we are. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes. I am joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Great afternoon. The uh, the plot daddy, Greg Miller. Could not be more excited to be here. And rounded out this group, the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. That's Nick Scarpino, raccoon. Okay, okay, cool. I thought you were going to go with your, your plot, <laughs> son, or whatever the fucking weird shit you got going on. Plot, not... daddy, plot, son. Step plotter. Step plotter. <laughs> step plotter. You have step to share plotter. a room with grandma, step you plotter. stupid idiot. Step plotter, I caught in the dryer. Help me, step plotter. <laughs> it is. Sorry, Andy. It Andy, shouldn't, Andy, be. Andy, I shouldn't be on this side. <laughs> Just run, Andy. <laughs> it reminds me so much of in Resident Evil when they're all all the hillbillies are sitting around the table and the guy's just trapped there and he has to deal with them all. Remember that? <laughs> oh, right. right. <laughs> well, you know what, everybody? This is Kind of Funny's In Review, where each and every week we rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. If there's a movie franchise out there that you love or that you hate, chances are we have reviewed it. So you should go check that out on YouTube dot com slash kind of funny roosterteeth.com or search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review and we'll be right there for you of course mcu is the first one we did uh, we are now this is the the what 40 41st entry into into this adventure that we've been 40 on second. 40 seconds uh, 40 seconds and we've had uh many um rewatches as well so many episodes of this have happened so you can go check them out Honestly, I see people tweeting at me all the time that they started listening from the beginning and they're like, God, these guys' takes, they're, they're horrible. And then they change and they're still horrible. I love it. You know what I mean? You too can go on that adventure. Yeah. Just search your favorite podcast services. But if you want to support this adventure even more, patreon.com slash kind of funny is where you want to go. Uh, if you go there, you can get this show ad free. Uh, you get a whole bevy of bonus content, a lot of great stuff all around that you get Andy. <laughs> you get all the water. <laughs> Step water, come out and play. Leave me alone. God, there's a, a intense smell of smoke in here now. Um, you really got to appreciate yeah. it. It is, it is strong and confetti. <laughs> how, how? How did he hurt himself going through an open door? It was an open door. We, off camera, we just hear, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> He hit, he hit himself. Kevin hit himself, but he's okay. He's okay. For audio listeners, he's okay. Walking through doors like a tilt a whirl. Here we are, Volume Three of Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, we are going to be doing our full spoiler review. This is full spoilers from here on out. The entire thing is going to be spoiled. So if you have not seen this movie, please go away. Uh, if you want spoiler-free thoughts, we did a screencast last week, so you can check that out. Um, but yeah, full spoilers from here on out. Greg's going to be doing the entire plot of this movie, which I'm very excited to hear coming out of his mouth. Um, some fun little stuff for you today. We're brought to you by Shady Rays, but I'll tell you about that later. Our Patreon producers, Greg, guess what? We got three of them. Nathan Lamoth, James Hastings, and Casey Andrew. I knew Burt May was too embarrassed to show his self. Where you at, Burt May? Can we, can we call Lamoth the Lamouth? The Lamouth from the South? Sure. Cool. Yeah. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, let us know, Nathan, if you don't like that. So Nathan and Lamoth, the Lamoth from the, the Lamoth from, from the, the South. South. Okay. Or like, like a Lamoth to the Flames. Oh, sure. We've had a big, big, big week here at Kind of Funny. And this is Friday Lamar. right now that we're recording this. For some this reason, now. I'm trying to get it into root beer float, but I can't. <laughs> I want to let everyone know as well that before we went live on this show, Greg essentially threatened that, like, we're, you know, we're not sure what's going to come out of his mouth. Uh, so I was hoping you forgot about that, Tim. Yeah. Why did you bring that up again? You know, here we are. Tim, Tim, mm -hmm. I, I chose to do this the long smoke because of that threat. Yeah. I understand that. Thank guy. you. Thank Take you. me on or try to slow me down. Egg hmm. you on. Thank you. Egg. 
<laughs> Egg. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy no. Volume 3, released on May 5th, 2023. Uh, the 42nd entry in the MCU, which is absolutely wild. Absolutely wild. Because um, it is now the longest movie to sequel gap that we have ever had in the MCU. Six years to the day since Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That came out May 5th. They've been in a buttload of stuff. Yeah, so they have. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder, Infinity War, Endgame. But yeah, this is uh, the longest longest gap. Doctor Strange to Doctor Strange 2 was also six years, but many, many fewer months. Ago. Who's had the most appearances since then? Was it Benedict Wong or the Guardians? Ooh, that's a great question. Keep Probably it, Benedict. Keep us honest. Yeah. Keep us it honest. must be. Keep us honest. Somebody kind of find com slash you're wrong. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just wild to think about this because six years ago, uh, Guardians 2 was the 15th project in the MCU. Jeez. Yeah, a lot, a lot of projects. A uh, runtime of two hours and 30 minutes, making it the Jesus. longest Guardians. Um, directed by and written, once again, by James Gunn. Woo! Uh, the music, for the first time, not done by Tyler Bates. Instead, done by John Murphy, the same guy that did Suicide Squad with James Gunn recently. Um, and he's also the, the dude that did the Kick-Ass score. Um, and 28 Days Later, 28 Weeks Later. And it has some of those songs that have been used in, like, every movie trailer ever. Um, so, really cool dude. Does cool music. Wasn't thrilled with the score in this one, um, but overall, it wasn't bad. When you uh, say score, do you mean does that include the soundtrack orchestra. part? No, of no, it? no okay, just right. the orchestra. Not score the o- side of it. OST. OST, motherfuckers. Um, this one had a budget of two hundred fifty million dollars and a box office of so far fifty two point five million dollars, which is really good. Tracking really well. It's tracking higher than Guardians two did uh, for its opening weekend and all that, and it's. Uh, Tracking really well for where the MCU is currently at uh, in this day and age. That's surprising to me. Tracking better than Guardians 2. Oh, yeah? Considering at the time of Guardians 2, it was banger after banger after banger. And we've had, you know, a couple duds here. I feel like the leading into Guardians 2, I don't know that we we were in banger season. Really? Age of Ultron. I feel like that was kind of like a chilling Uh, time. There was some hits for sure, but... People knew they liked Guardians, though. And I think right now they know they're like more yeah. than ever. They know they're like guardians. Yeah. Um, so so there we go. Now we're going to get into our thoughts on this movie. I want to start with Greg Miller. Hi. Who it's freshest in your mind because you saw it last night. Sure, but I had two beers and martini while I watched. Oh, oh. here we go. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it. I, I I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. I think it's my second favorite Guardians. I I put two in front of it, then this, then one. Mm. Uh, in terms of the theatrical movies. Uh, I liked it. I think, you know, upon reflecting as I was getting ready for the show, right, it's not a movie I've gone back to think about a lot since I saw since credits rolled last night. I walked out and I was like, that was a nice little check-in on them. I thought it was a very safe film. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I think we got more of everybody, and they're all still out there in the MCU, even if they're not together when we leave them there. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. The way, you know, the rumors leading up to it or the comments, oh, it's so dark, it's so this. I was like, oh, shit, people are going to die. They're going to do this different stuff. Uh, in the end, everybody kind of gets a happy ending, right? Like, I thought I, they, for our main cast, uh, I thought they left it in a really interesting and cool spot with it. I thought, you know, as James Gunn is prone to do, uh, he knows the characters incredibly well and left them in interesting things and didn't do what I thought could have been cheesy and cop ass, right? I really like that Gamora and Pete don't end up together. I really like that Gamora just goes off back to be the Raj- Ravagers and is super happy to be back with the Ravagers, right? Uh, I appreciated, uh, you know, the moment that got me to tear up. There was one other one. I think it was something, with, obviously, with Rocket. Or maybe when Peter was crying over Rocket's body or whatever. But I really liked when uh, Drax went into dad mode. And then we got that thing of, you're not, the, you're not a destroyer, you're a dad. And I was like, oh, that's really good. You know what I mean? Like, that was a super sweet moment, too, and stuff like that. But it was fun. It was enjoyable. I laughed a bunch. I had a good time. I that's thought what Adam, we say about you, Greg. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought Adam Warlock was weird right of just like yeah. here we're gonna introduce this guy and he's not really in the film but he's in the film and he'll pop up I'm like all right i feel like we could have done without him but you've added him to the universe and he's there or whatever and cool enough but credits and it rolled and i enjoyed myself and i was like all right cool nicholas scarpino yeah it was an enjoyable film um for me it actually i don't, it does not rank very highly amongst the trilogy i think it would actually rank dead last i think it felt rushed it felt almost as if you know I, it just felt like they weren't treating it with the reverence that I would assume the end of the trilogy would be. It kind of just, a lot of the jokes for me just did not hit. And and that was kind of the thing that dragged the movie down for me was I was like, oh, I want, I want that James Gunn beat you over the head with jokes and 80% hit and 20% don't. But in this one, I was just like, none of these are really hitting for me with the exception of the rare Drax quip. Um, and I think that it, it what's that? Zargnuts. 
to Zognan. I would have liked to Zognan. Yeah, we were out. <laughs> it was the last one. He just eats another one slowly, really slowly. slowly. <laughs> Stuff like that is 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 good. But you know, I think it was a, an uphill battle a little bit. Um, and, and I to to kind of give a send off to all these characters that we love. And I do wonder that. And this is just me kind of shooting in the dark completely. If James Gunn was like, I really want to finish this, but I'm also being pulled. It felt like he was being pulled in the direction of the DC stuff that he's working on. Um, just because I just, it just doesn't feel like this film got the full attention and the full script treatment that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 did. You definitely make a point there that I, I, I would say resonates with me. It didn't feel like the end of the James Gunn trilogy. Right. This didn't feel like we were hand, leaving the Guardians for good or whatever. This definitely feels like there's way more to their stories even though we may not ever get it or whatever or well, prefer a definitive end yeah yeah i mean i i mean I, it's it's an end as much as <laughs> marvel can do an ending for characters that haven't died on screen even those characters that do die on screen can come back but but for me it was just like this is a it's it's a good third movie in a trilogy um it just didn't hit it wasn't as tightly structured and as tight and 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 nearer perfect as Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was for me, which is a great movie for me that's adventurous. We're getting to know these characters, and we're still getting all those great fun quips that are breaking up the tension. And in this one, it just kind of, parts of it felt like they were like, we've got this Christmas set from the Christmas special. Nowhere, yeah. Some of it, some of it felt a little bit like this. We're, 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 we're creeping into territory of, you know, an MC uh, or Disney Plus sort of like streaming show as far as like the quality dips in some of the shots. Interesting. Yeah, some of it, some of it just didn't work for me visually. Um, and then, yeah, the Adam Warlock character was just man. That was a joke that ran itself into the ground very, very quickly. Um, which is an, an, unfortunate for me because I like that actor and I like the character. Yeah. So, um, but overall, I do agree. Like, I liked, I liked that uh, Gamora and Pete kind of had more complex relationship, and it was maybe they will get together one day. There was that little sure. door opening where she's like, we're, you know, he's like, we were good together, or whatever yeah, that yeah, last yeah, little line was. Yeah, but we're, but we're great together. Um, and then part of me, I was like, why, how bold would it be if he actually got with Nebula? Like if they actually started a relationship because they've been working together for so long, but I'm also glad they didn't do that. Um, and then rocket taking over was, was interesting, but I don't know. It just, it was one of those where I walked away with it. I was like, Hmm, I don't know that I need any more guardians of the galaxy after this, which is not what I had hoped the feeling would be. I would hope that I would have had a feeling of loss, but sure. instead it was, it was just like, eh, it was a so-so movie. That's my thing where I, I, I don't, yeah, there's no. Probably why I didn't think of it again. It felt like, and, you know, it's based on comic books, but it felt like just a comic book that I put down. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, they're still out there doing their thing in the world. Or Pete's whatever. visiting his grandpa. That's yeah, it. and like, honestly, like, I thought that wasn't, maybe it was, I guess I, I, I'm using it fast and loose here as I think about it and talk to you guys. I felt like that was kind of forced, where it's like, yeah, I know your dad, your grandfather's back on Earth or whatever, but it was just like, you know, movie two never really referenced talking about him or feeling like that was a distressed thing. So just to toss it out there, I'm like, I get it, and I buy it that you would have that, right? But then to go back there and have that be a big moment, like it it pales in comparison to losing Yondu, right? And like, yeah. So it's like to get there and then, you know, the legendary Star-Lord will return. I'm like, oh, is this setting up a Disney Plus show where he's just going to be back on Earth, like learning our customs and stuff? I'm like, that would be interesting and fun, but like, I didn't need it in this movie necessarily. Yeah. I didn't feel it necessarily. I was, I mean, the you, performance you, by the grandfather was great when he stood up and hugged him. I thought, but you do. I mean, you did. I, I think all of us at one point wonder was like, hey, did Pete ever go back to Earth? Like, did he ever talk to his grandfather? Because that's kind of a shit dick move for him to just leave and like Get never come back. So I did want that closure personally for myself. And yeah. I thought that was a poignant scene. Um, but yeah, I'll agree. I, everything else I agree with. Andy Cortez. Um, I'm probably higher on Greg and Nick than, uh, I'm probably higher on it than they were, but it's still probably going to end up around the middle of my list just because of how strong the first like 10, 15 movies are. Um, I, I had a lot of fun with it. The thing that I noticed the most while watching it is that for the last several Marvel movies, I can pick out things that I love and I can pick out a lot of things that I hate or just when you're watching, you're like, this I don't feel good right now. <laughs> like this isn't <laughs> this isn't working for me right now. And this movie for me didn't have any of those sequences. It was either like I like this or I love this. And I think that's like for James Gunn to not give me a whole lot of um, moments that make me feel like maybe the the writing isn't working or the the acting isn't working. I thought this movie works on a lot of different levels, um, but it does feel like. Like, before the DC deal happened, and maybe even before James Gunn was fired by Disney, it did feel like um, there was more future planned for the Guardians because we didn't have a whole lot of setup for what these endings were. And I, I, I say that prim primarily talking about Peter Quill's grandfather. Um, 
But it did feel like maybe three and four and five, and maybe there's going to be a lot of Guardians movies that James Gunn or Marvel was going to work on. But then once the firing happened and then the rehiring and then the DC moved, it's like, obviously the DC moved happened way later, but it did feel like, all right, this one has to be the last one now. So let's kind of, you know, uh, let's make some conclusions for our characters that maybe weren't super built up through a lot of these movies. Um, I do wish, like Greg was mentioning, I do wish we had more uh, talk about his family back on Earth. And I, I just feel like it wasn't drilled enough into us. Um, but uh, by the end of it, I'm crying my eyes out for several different moments, whether it's it's like glee or just fucking sadness. So, like there's a lot of moments that just bum you out. Um, I really enjoy that awesome slow-mo fight sequence from James Gunn. I feel like that was him being like, I'm going to get to Go say, all out. I'm going to say fuck in this movie and I'm going to have a pretty violent uh, part in this movie that you don't really see in a whole lot of Disney movies. That It seems less violent because you're seeing not red blood from humans, you're seeing like green blood from aliens, but it was still like pretty gory and, and kind of felt like him returning to form with a lot of his past stuff. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought the movie was really great, and I recommend everybody watch it if you enjoyed the first two. And I think it's the strongest trilogy of all Mar of all the MCU. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely closer with you. Like I loved this movie. I don't think quality wise it's as high as the other two, but uh, we've talked about this a lot, especially in the rewatches. That watching Guardians two for the first time, I was kind of like I left the theater. I was like that was fun, but like I didn't really love it, and I don't know how good it was. And then every time I rewatch, I was like, oh my god, I I fucking love that movie. It's definitely my number one of the Guardians, um, and very high on my MCU list overall. And I watched this movie a second time last night, and I liked it infinitely more than I did the the first time I watched it. I'm Still, hoping for that too, where it's like for both Guardians 1 and Guardians 2, the more I watch them, the more I dug them. So it's always hard to do this coming off of night one, being like, okay, yeah, but... Yeah, and it doesn't solve every single problem that I have with it, but um, I feel like with Guardians 2, one of my bigger things was there was a lot of characters introduced, like Mantis was there and Kraglin, and it was kind of like, they're just here, They're not. Just, I want to see the Guardians, I don't really care about them, they're not that strong. But every time I rewatch it, I'm like, especially with the context of what we know about them in for future movies i'm like oh they actually did a really good job in two it's just you just need to kind of like let it sink into you yeah. and i feel the same way about uh adam warlock and most of the kind of like extended crew in this movie of uh the new characters introduced where the first time i was like oh i'm feeling pretty low on this and the second time i'm like contextually it actually makes a lot more sense and i think that that's kind of like if i were to re review all these on the kind of funny scale of one to five i'd give guardians one and two a five and i'd give this a four but close to that five i just think that it, it's almost near impossible to to get there with this because of the fact that this needs to work as a just new entry in the MCU, but also as the end of a trilogy of the Guardians movies, but also dealing with the fact that we are six years removed and the Guardians have had three appearances in movies that James Gunn had little to do with, right? So the choices that were made that Adam Warlock was teased in the post credits of Guardians 2. For us to not get him here and for him to not be part of Infinity War at all is like, ah, oh, shit, what are we going to do? And yeah. I feel like... Through the lens of like what James had to work with, I feel like this is pretty much as perfect a job as he could have done because um, James Gunn is fantastic about characters and fantastic about themes. And I think that this movie's themes and characters are debatably the strongest of the entire series so far for me. Like the whole, the everyone deserves a second chance. That whole bit, I thought they just did such a great job of making sure every character kind of had that running through the entire thing. And for the first movie to really be about finding a family and then the second movie to be like dealing with real family and then the third movie to be about friends and like the friendship and how it's a different type of family and like that can evolve and change. I was really impressed with it overall, and I feel the that the jokes didn't land. I definitely laughed the least in this movie, but it's not that they they weren't landing. It's just I don't think there were. It's not. It's not nearly as jokey as the other movies. Like I think a lot of the darkness and stuff comes from they they play the movie more seriously. Not to say it's not funny because I, I, I laughed a lot, but um, I do think that some of the characters are very similarly styled humor. Like when it comes to Drax and Adam Warlock and Groot, all kind of having the same like. I'm a little bit stupid type vibes and yeah. Mantis even sometimes that uh, the jokes can kind of feel samey. But um, but when Drax does them, I feel like they hit 99% of the time and everybody else is always a little bit hit or miss, you know? Yeah. But uh, what I just really appreciate is the, the com James Gunn commitment to just making this the end of his trilogy and sticking to his stuff and keeping all the through lines going. And while some of the storylines can feel messy because he's picking up from stuff from the first movie, like 
He went back to the grandpa because that was the thing that was introduced and we just left him. And I've always been like, that's weird. And for them to come back, I'm like, cool, you tied that together. The high evolutionary being tied into Adam Warlock and the, um, sovereign. The, sovereign. the sovereign, which is like all of this makes sense. It's like, especially rewatching these, it really strengthened this for me. And mm -hmm. I feel like later in the future when we rewatch this with all that knowledge even more, it's only going to get better and better. But as it stands right now, I feel like this is easily one of the best uh, MCU movies we've had in recent times. For sure. Um, and I, I loved it, man. I really, really, really enjoyed the hell out of this movie, and I hope that other people do, too. But before we get into the plot, I want to tell you about our sponsors. Shout out to Shady Rays for sponsoring this episode. Do you want to look as cool as I look? Yes, you do. And you can. You can take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an unbeatable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair that I've ever worn in my life. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. You can wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Exclusively for you listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. You can go to ShadyRays.com and use the code KINDAFUNNY. You can get 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. You can try for yourself the shades that are rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Promo code KINDAFUNNY at ShadyRays.com. Here's the plot. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. You crushed it. You crushed that. Before we, we get it real quick, two things I want to say. One, Andy goddamn Cortez called it, man. Freaking called the shot, nailed it out of the goddamn sky. Like uh, second song, right? It was like the second song in the movie. Yeah, Guardians 2 rewatch, Greg, uh, yeah. which I don't think you were on. No. Uh, we were like predicting what songs are going to be in it. He straight up, he was like, like I can't believe that Heart has I was like, where's Heart? heart? And then I thought Tim knew heart. the. I thought you knew the soundtrack. I thought you like looked at like no. leaks or whatever. And when that song played, uh, like as it's happening, it's like slowly developing and like it's kind of like seeping into my brain. I'm like, oh, this is hard. Oh my god! And I was like, wait. And I looked to my left. And I was like, nobody was on. These people weren't on Guardians to rewatch. So wait, does Joey remember? I don't know. And I was like, well, Tim, where's Tim at? And, I looked, yeah. I was and like, we both looked over. We had the same thing of like that delayed thing of like, wait a minute. Wait, this is the song? What the fuck? <laughs> Leaned over, there's 20 people between me and Tim. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's crazy. So that, that was awesome. But the last thing I want to say is I loved the way that this movie ended of where all the characters are. I love that nobody died. Like, I feel like all the, like this to me is what James Gunn's good at. Is like darkness doesn't mean death. Character doesn't, like moments of making you cry doesn't need to come from people dying. It can yeah. come from like people living and from like, like the changes that they go through. And I think that they nailed it like across the board. Something's happened fast. Mantis leaving the way she did felt weird, but I think it really makes sense for the way she was written. Yeah, she explains it too, right? And yeah. I thought, I thought I, again, buy it. Okay, yep. yeah, yeah. You go to the Guardians and you've never done anything on your own. Yeah, that makes sense. And also no one listens to you, so you need to go out and like develop your own personality. And, like, but man, Mantis and Drax was just such a heartbreak. Heartbreaker, man. But oh. that's good. <laughs> that's great. That's you gonna good say that, Nick? Oh, no, I was just going to say like it's it's – it's interesting because I you walk away from the film and you go, well, these people can travel pretty much across the galaxy, through punch holes in the space, pretty holes, super fast, pretty quickly. So why is the team dissolving? Why are you guys not being like, hey, I'm just gonna go to Earth and visit my grandpa for a week? That the ending of this kind of felt like a little too definitive, like, and and that's what I mean when I mean rush. Like, I don't think it was set up that all these characters really needed to leave the team, and I don't buy that they would leave their family. To go off and, you know and never works. see each other. How many times I'm going to take a sabbatical? Oh, I'm going to take a year. I'm going to take a sabbatical for a year and I'll come back. And people come back, they never stay. They always leave. So do a bunch of them. ayahuasca. You know, exactly. They mm -hmm. love the ayahuasca. They yeah. love that. Smoke it. Is that what it is? Yeah. You uh, smoke wait. The ayahuasca. I think you do. I think yeah. you drink it. I don't know. No, you drink it. Yeah, you yeah, do drink it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you drink ayahuasca. What do you do with peyote? Peyote you smoke. I think. Yeah. yeah. Crack, crack you smoke also. Yeah, sure. Hair the block, Greg. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Uh, welcome to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Are baby raccoons really this small? So you know cute. what I mean? Like they're just tiny like, in this we're, cage. Uh, Greg, we're talking about like the size of a cell phone. I'm like, but would their eyes be open at that point? They look so, so small. So Nick, yeah. What's up, Nick? How big is it compared to a pumpkin? <laughs> 
It's just the size I of mean, a pumpkin. Who can say? Who can say? Yo, dude, I'm sorry. There's so much shit I want to say about this movie, but the um, I could not disagree with you more, Nick, about the the production quality. I was blown away. By it, the, it was just the it was just this first part really that I'm talking about because it was the same set, so you could tell they had like filmed portions of it. For the holiday special, and then this, I was like, that was well, it was backwards. I mean, they did the holiday special using the movie set. Yeah, but that was weird because the holiday special came out first. So my my touchstone for the set was the poorly lit, very Disney Channel, like very Hallmark Channel holiday special, which was fucking great. Shout yeah, out to Kevin Bacon for doing it. But it was weird that I was like, oh, that is granted more CG and stuff. But in my brain, I'm like, that just broke me, dude. I can't. It was so weird seeing it poorly lit there, and then coming back to Harem being and seeing some of it just kind of stick out like a sore thumb for me. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I love the I loved it. All that stuff, all the issue. tech shit that we talk about from all the movies of like like even in two where there was like the the asteroid meteor thing and they're all teleporting and shit. In this, the weird organic planet they're on, like the way that the tech works and shit, I was like, this is just very visually minded. And like, there's like a, a like a, an idea behind it all. Yeah. But the fucking animal animations, like, we need to give this movie so much freaking credit. Like that, those were raccoons. Were they a little too small or whatever? Sure, whatever. I'm not exactly. I'm oh, not I don't know. I, I legit don't know. know. I just thought they were super tiny. But it's like, I, I honestly was like, I'm looking at animals. You know what I mean? And like sometimes it's like, all right, cool. It's a, it's a, can be a little bit like this is CG. There is that moment you realize it. But like I, this level of CG reminds me of some of the best we've ever seen. Like the Pirates of the Caribbean, freaking. Uh, uh, whatever his name is, Davy Jones. Jones. And he has locker. Like, and his locker. I just could not believe. Like, Kev, can you bring up that the um, James Gunn? He thinks he has Twitter again. Theodore in his locker. The, he has a series. James has been posting a series of behind the scenes, like a animatronic or, or whatever, animatic um, test footage for all the different animals. Like, look at that. That's not a real animal. That's blowing my mind, man. You got fuzzy little mouse. Oh, it's cute. fucking perfect. Yeah, all these screen tests they've been posting have been very, very good, and they were by. That one CG house, Nick, that we saw in the credits, we're like, that's a cool name for a CG house. I think frame it's house or something like that? Yeah, frame Noodle something. House. Yeah, frame store. Frame store. Yeah. Badass. Oh, that's one of the big ones. Yeah, they, they just want batteries. Them, dude. They look great. They just want to eat batteries. They just eat batteries, Greg. Uh, I have a lot of baby rockets there because this movie is going to be all about Rocket's backstory. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, of course, we go, zoom in on his little sad eyes, and then we zoom out of the sad eyes, and he's a big he's a big man raccoon now. He's a sad eyes raccoon on the planet of nowhere where we, we left him on the holiday special, of course. Uh, of course, everything's been just bopping along on the holiday special. And so we be bopping around. And be bopping around on nowhere. And so we wander around nowhere for a while, and we see the different sights, the different sounds. We see, you know, a Nebula raising up a sign that looks like the Guardian's logo in another language. Like, oh, it says Guardians of the Galaxy own this place, and we'll fuck you up if you fuck us up. They man. better all get tattoos of that, all the whole cast. All, sure. all seven. I'll of get them, one with them. them. Wow. That's a big of you. I appreciate it. Where, where are you going to put on your body? A tramp stamp. Cool. Wow. Love very it. nice. Thank very cool. Right Distinctly darker tone here for this intro. Normally, Guardians, we get the fun, upbeat yeah. music and stuff. This is Radiohead's creep, creep, like yeah. the sad version. Very nice. Different version Rocket of it. Just kind of going through. Like, I, I appreciated the, the different kind of thing. I think did a good job of setting the tone for what the movie's going to be. Weird, weird for me, though. I was like, oh, this is a, I love the song, obviously, but it was like a re. I don't know who sang it. Yeah, I don't it, think it was Radiohead. Radiohead. Yeah. It was a cover. Yeah. And it, I was oh, like, really? Oh. I thought it was Radiohead, but just not like an instrumental. It's possible. If it was Radiohead, then we recorded it. I, was I, think it's, release it's was. Acoustic. I think it's Radiohead, but it's yeah. acoustic. Okay. I was waiting for the... <laughs> like the actual music right. to pop in, but nothing. Never uh, off the Zoom, playing on the big speakers. Yeah. I do want to give a oh, shout out to the fact that they, they, stole, they basically just took nowhere and made it their headquarters, right? It's great. Their, their mobile floating headquarters, which yeah. is hilariously and awesome. That's an great. actual headquarter. Boom. Yeah, it's a floating head, too. Didn't, uh, didn't, didn't they mention yep. buying it at some point? Holiday special. Okay. Cover that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're taking I, it over. I will say that when we get the little lines between Mantis and Peter being like, you are my sister, I'm like, oh, I forgot that was a thing. I appreciated <laughs> that. Yeah, they, yeah. That, they, I, I, I needed even, that. <laughs> I liked that the continuation of the holiday special because I like the holiday special so much, and I appreciated that you, we've had this whole thing of like, well, how are they going to integrate shows into the movies for people who don't, they didn't give a shit? If you haven't watched it, guess what? They're brother and sister, and we're not going to bother saying it, catching you up about it, really. And then also Kevin Bacon was in this, and he had a big thing, and you'll see him on the newspaper, mm -hmm. and yada, yada, yada. Cosmo, baby. Cosmo. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's the thing. We had a few character interactions. We walk around nowhere, including uh, Craglin calling Cosmo a bad dog, which will be a running joke now the rest of the way through this, right? I, yeah, I got to be honest. That was my, my least favorite joke in the whole thing, too. That was like a taser face moment for me where I was like, this performance from, who's the actress that plays Cosmo? Mar Maria, Maria Baklava. Baklava. Yeah. I forget what she, what I forget what she Borat. said. Borat. Borat, yeah. I was like, 
I, it's, I'm just not buying this. It just it, the, the comedy, the comedic timing of it is just not hitting. And man, when those jokes don't hit and they do them over and over again, it it can be bad. It's it worked for, for me at first, and then they kept on kind of revisiting that well, and that's when I was. But then, literally, but the problem is like you you know the humor comes in threes, and it's always a setup for something with that character. And so when Craglin at the very very end is trying to like mess around with the arrow, I was like, well, Cosmo's just gonna come help him, and then he's gonna call her a good dog, and that's exactly what happened. I was like, all right, it was that's awesome. A good moment. Yeah, was it was set up and it was yeah, payoff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was I was lukewarm on it. Could have done with it. Could have done without it. I think it was weak in the middle, good in the front and the back. Yeah, as a joke, I didn't think it was funny, but as like a setup to that moment, I thought it was great. Uh, of course, Craglin's trying to learn the Yondu arrow. He impales Gamora here. Cosmo does show, remember she has TK power. Shows us off a little bit. Uh, Basically, though, keep going. Uh, Rocket walks into the bar where he finds Peter Quill drunk off his ass, still super heartbroken and sad about Gamora. Uh, Peter did starts- not like this. Yeah, it was weird because in the holiday, especially, it wasn't a, 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 a drunk. I mean, he wasn't drunk all the time. Who knows? Maybe he was drinking there. He was drinking, but he that's wasn't a drunk. That's a sad drunk. moment, though. I just only didn't like the Peter drinking thing because I feel like the, it didn't take his story. Like It didn't fit with the story that they build for the rest of this movie with him. Like, they don't address that stuff. Like, we we are doing a lot of filling in the gaps of, oh, he's sad because Gamora, and so now he's drinking and all that. But it's like it, the drinking shit and him falling over, like, that stuff really didn't work for me. They had a, they had a little bit of a moment where he's like, I'm, you, you got that he's like, I'm, I'm going to clean this up because if I hadn't been drunk, I could have helped. Yeah. Maybe Rocket wouldn't have yeah. been killed. Yeah, totally. So I do get that. And then also he is spending time with Gamora the entire time, so it's kind of giving him what he wants. And w- or it's counteracting what the, his, you know, the main source of his trauma is. But, yeah, I mean, it was, it's dark for sure. And for a character that you love, it is a very hard thing to watch and 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 it does not endear you to Star-Lord's character in this for sure. It reminded me of of Tony being super famished in in Endgame or Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Endgame? Endgame. Endgame. There no, was a nobility Endgame. to that though that there's not in this. Oh one. no, I just no, I just I'm talking about like as far as seeing the, a character no. you love being in that state. It was like Oh, I, I, is this supposed to be played for humor? Like, are we supposed to laugh at? Because it? it just felt like bad. Oh, this was not supposed to be yeah. played for humor. They wanted you to know that he was in a in a bad place, and you, you were supposed to. It hurt me. It was supposed to be very vulnerable. You said famished, character. right? Yeah. Okay. What did I mean? Hungry. He meant hungry. Yeah. Yeah. But was, which I thought sh- shawarma from the original Avengers. You're talking about how he was emaciated. Yeah. Well, like, like emaciated is yeah. the word. I was yeah. for. <laughs> famished means like oh, we famished is yeah. I, well, man, it's, we got to wrap this up. I'm, I need to get to dinner. <laughs> Learn something today. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I guess he was still hungry, though. Sure, yeah, yeah. he was definitely I hungry. Been, well, I yeah, been, yeah, for sure. Skinny, <laughs> sure. skinny looking yeah. sick, yeah. Um, so anyways, though, yeah, Peter falls down drunk. Uh, you know, Rocket gets his little juice box, and then the Guardians of the Galaxy carry Peter out and put him to bed up in his little room there because he's so sad and, and tired up there. Um, then, of course, Adam Warlock gets introduced. Uh, there's something that happens in between here, but who cares? Uh, he rockets down to come after Rocket. He's bebopping around, shooting through, grabs Rocket, smashes through Pete's room. Everybody's all hands on deck running around trying to stop him and do it the yeah. anime influence of all the of this entire movie i was fucking blown away by like these fights were so sick to look at i love that james gunn lets it get gory even without gore of just nebula like getting all fucked up yeah, and yeah. To, like um get back into shape and stuff but nebula flying down with the fucking anime jetpack is so sick Groot having the kaiju stuff like i just feel like they leaned into like style stylish action and stylish like character moments cool for that we haven't cool seen before sure. in yeah. or cool. rarely in the mcu at all so i love that stuff. i like nebula's arm being that sort of nanotech arm yeah, yeah. Was that was cool. sick that was rad uh, tears Groot's head off, uh, breaks all of Nebula, breaks Mantis's arm, takes down Drax, right? Uh, and it's just wailing on Drax until uh, Nebula shows up and stabs him through the back with her uh, high-tech arm or whatever. And I think this is the beginning of James Gunn playing with the audience and, like, who's going to die here? Yep. Who's getting it here? Constantly. The you, whole movie. Because I, I think it's Drax. I think Drax is getting killed. And then later on, it happens again. But I feel like... Throughout the movie, you're getting a lot of these moments of hey, audience. This could be it for this favorite character. Wouldn't that suck? And then they they end up being okay, which is great. But I just felt like he kind of played with that a bit too obviously in some ways. I don't know. We introduced the cool med-, med packs here from the future that they can just toss on stuff to fix anything. Fixes Mantis's arm, no problem. Uh, they toss it onto Rocket, of course, but he starts shorting out. Uh, G- uh, Gamora, Jesus. Uh, Nebula grabs it, throws it, on, throws it yeah. off. Like, you can't. Something's wrong. And they run, and sh- run a bunch of tests on him. She plugs in and does, like, the Matrix eye thing. That was really cool. Tight. Discovers that, of course, there's a trigger, uh, like a booby trap on his heart that can't let it do it. I love the 3D the hologram Sick. sort of, it, you know, looking within it. That's such a cool effect. Yeah. 
Um, so then it's like, okay, cool. Well, we got to do this. We got to do it fast. This is when Pete is there, right? And I could have saved him. Of course, uh, uh, Adam's gone away at this point. Yeah. Uh, Black Adam, as we'll call him the rest of the show. And he's sure. fucked up. I think he's yeah. like, finally, Scott. he's all yeah. limping yeah. and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they, you know, they run some serial You want to call him Black Adam? Is that what you him. said? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just for this moment. Because that's what Jen leaned over and said to me. And I thought she was making a joke. And then about 15 minutes later, she goes, Adam Warlock. I had a Black Adam. I'm like, I know who Black Adam is. I, know, <laughs> I, I thought you are making a joke. Like, I'm painfully me. aware of who Black yeah, Adam is. <laughs> he's... The hierarchy of power in the MCU is about to change. <laughs> change. Um, so anyways, uh, they get the, the manufacturing number on it. There's somebody they think they could know, so they're going to go up to the, the, the fleshy planet, though we don't know oh, where the fleshy oh, planet. Oh, oh, Oglethorpe's. Oh, 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 uh, they get up, and they're outside of there, and it's who shows up. It's, it's oh, they're, they say, hey, we're going to meet up with, uh, no, not yet. Uh, they, they're up there, and then, oh, my God, it's the Ravagers, and the Ravagers come on the ship, and here's Sly, Sly Stallone, and here's Michael Rosenbaum and the ice uh, diamond face thing, and then uh, we have an appointment with Gamora, and then what? And then Gamora's there. Oh, my God. It's crazy. This group's fucking awesome, man. Like, we, yeah. we saw a little bit of them in two, but, like, and especially, like, this group in the post credits, but seeing them come in and, the, again, the visual fucking style of the the um, sorcerer red coming alien in, the red thing. alien, pulling all the different portals for them to come in. Perfect. It was just like, this is fucking so awesome. Speaking in some visual Emoji language. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> that shit was really, really cool. We've seen that before, right? Yeah. I've seen that. Okay, I always make sure. Uh, of course, they set it up. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna, all right, so we're at, we'll help you, and you're going to get in there, but you got to get in there. I was like, oh, this is a prison, and then it wasn't a prison, and I was lost a little bit what the flesh place was. Was the, Miley Cyrus in, in? Yeah, she was the little the talking head thing. Oh, good for her. But did she get replaced or something? I saw some oh, did she? I, I saw some headline that I was like, I don't know. I, I thought it was, I, I, I snapped away something about her. I thought being replaced. But oh, yeah. It was I, before I, I saw the movie, so it's I It's like a Miley. I just assumed it was it's her. It's a Miley she Hannah talk. Montana that sort character of thing. talks. I okay. Just, okay. Super. Chat, let us know. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and so, yeah, you know, we got to put you on guys into suits and bring you in there. So they get in there among us space suits and they fly over there and they land on the little fleshy fucking prison. Yeah. I, love, I love, I love all of this. I love yeah. the visuals of the suits yeah. being different colors. I the great gag. joke I thought here. Yeah. Of, yeah. The colors. No, no, no. I hit Black blue to blue. Talk to blue. blue. Yeah. yeah she, it did. They did. <laughs> it looks very intuitive. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I hit the blue to talk to me. Yeah, 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 very cool. A good and a good character moment here between Pete and Gamora, where she's like, "Dude, I'm just not." I think it's here, right? She's like, "I am not the person that uh, that other person was. That's not me." And you're like, the, "And because you really start thinking about that from her perspective, you're like, eh, it's kind of fucked up that she's never met this guy before in her entire life." Tell somebody, yeah, you like, we were in love. It'd be yeah. fucking weird and very disheartening and creepy. So I, I, I like I, that she kind of stays with that. I do like that we are past the point of the sort of angry Gamora being like, get the fuck away. Like, you could tell she's heard this story many times before. Yeah, apparently like they're strong. Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. I like that we're at the point of her just kind of having to deal with this annoying dude as opposed to the way it was. I thought we were going to get more of the Infinity War or more of the Endgame sort of reaction to, like, punching him in the nuts and stuff. Like, I like that it was more like, dog, th that's not me. I'm sorry. You yeah. know, like, you could tell, like, she was kind of just, oh, I'm tired of this shit. I'm empathetic, know? but yeah. get over it, bro. And so, yeah, they're in there. They did that. They eject their suits out into space by accident. Nathan Fillion's there. Great. Love yeah, him. Just out of the blue. Love him. He just looks yeah. so good. Just bring everybody from Peacemaker. Of course, uh, 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 James Gunn's wife, whose character and name I can never remember when we get to this. I'm really hardcore. I had it, I had it right. What yeah, hardcore. But He's hardcore. Yeah, Peacemaker. exactly. Thank you. I was looking for that more than anything. Yeah. I don't want to reduce her to his wife. Um, the, one of the few moments I actually laughed out loud in this movie was when she gets shot in a leg. It's kind of like she just fucking screams. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so violent. Uh, anyways, though. This is the friends and family cameo section of yeah, the, this is of, like of hey, the movie. Yeah, cool people. Uh, uh, yeah, so they, they come in there. I like the Nathan Fillion joke alongside of him. Like, this guy's an idiot. I got one of those too. And yeah, that back and forth. That was all fun. Such right? a fucking good line. So they're able to, <laughs> they're able to escalate, uh, you know, get to basically the records room where Peter's going to try to romance the girl to get the record. Of course, Gamora gives them all three seconds to do it and then pulls a gun. They get the thing they need about Rocket. Uh, then, of course, the, all hell breaks loose. And then it's a giant shootout. Really cool action here. Lots of fun stuff, mm -hmm. I thought, as they ran around shooting at each other. and doing. This is some of the best setup and payoff, though, I'd say, in the whole movie. Of You feel like you're kind of getting, like, this joke is overdone. And we're getting the, come on, she, she would have liked me. And, like, no, she wasn't into mm -hmm. you, Peter. Whatever. And the, the payoff of him lying to her and being like, Fucking told you, like I told you, she was into me. When he finally gets Thanks, her, like, you to log in. that was such a good payoff. That girl was a uh, rat catcher too. Oh, oh really? From uh, oh, who said squad? Friends and family, oh. like you said. No, about to be in Fast Ten. Oh, very cool. Oh. Atlanta oh. Red, 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 Yellow, oh. Melcourt, somewhere. Yeah, Mc Mckellor, Mc Mc yeah. Mc 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 yeah. Mc Mc yeah. Mc 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 Mc
Not Melkor. Sick, that's you know I mean? one of the Dark Lords from uh, the Silmarillion. And and they open up the thing and they Tolkien. look and it's it's you, we see over the shoulder stuff of Roger uh, Roger uh, Ro uh, uh, Rocket being tortured or whatever. And Nebula has line of this is worse than what Thanos did to me. Obviously, we've had about a billion fucking flashbacks to Rocket. Sorry, sticklers, that I didn't put him in the right spot. But of course, we see what Rocket's whole deal has been. Andy, another moment of oh fuck, is Jack's dead, bro? He got shot twice oh, by that big ass gun. Thing, yeah, and like. They're pulling him away, and it's like another moment of me going, "Oh fuck, this is where they're gonna like take him out right now." And then no, just another He's like Chad mentioned the false flag stuff. It kind of starts to get a little bit old near the end. Um, I do love, I do love that. I mean, you touched on it right with Gamora being like hyper violent because she still comes from that world, and the Guardians are like, "Whoa, we're not, we don't really kill people anymore. <laughs> like that's not our thing anymore." I love that, and I love that they let her just be that character because you're not really supposed to see Gamora the way she was. Uh, you know, in the beginning of Infinity War, you're supposed to see this new character now who is fucking a Ravager. She's a space pirate, and she goes by that code, which is by any means, right? Yeah, yeah. we're so used to seeing her 10 years of living sort of this evolving, reformed and, yeah. life. Like, we saw, like, a, like, a, uh, I'm thinking of, like, this sort of rabid, you know, fucking creature that has now been totally normalized, and they are, like, mm -hmm. living at home, and they, it's you like know, of course, they could still whoop ass, but they are not this person that's just going to shoot innocence in the leg like she right. does with Amelia Harcourt. She's going to call her Harcourt, right? That's nailed it, Christian. Uh, so, yeah, they get out of there. But then, like I said, there's been flashbacks. So we, all, we saw Rocket's whole deal, right? Rocket was there. He was getting tortured. They cut open his little noggin, and he said, hurt, it hurt. I don't know. I don't like that. And then it was Sky when he's talking to his friends. The other <laughs> no, I don't like there. that. <laughs> I, that was too much. You know what I mean? That, that was like, ooh, that's sad. That's, yeah. Like, that's super sad. All the flashback stuff worked for me just perfectly. Like, yeah. I, th this is some of the most powerful shit. That, like, again, why I love the James Gunn tone is, like, these moments of just realness and, like, connections between characters people whatever they are and i just i thought it, it all really really worked and i setting it up with him and his friends knowing everything we know about rocket and what we see the journey he goes on him finding this new family like i thought it was incredibly powerful yeah i, I loved all of it it was a lot of flashbacks though and that was my that was when i uh, originally when we opened the episode or this episode's podcast i said this felt episodic and that's why it felt like he's we flash back into the episode he's in <laughs> exactly we kept going back to these flashbacks to tell the story and while it was incredibly compelling and very very well done it was so many flashbacks and so many different versions of that that it felt like i was watching a 10 episode arc of a really really good show on like netflix or hbo max not necessarily a movie it's just very i don't think we've ever seen anything like this in an mcu before so it felt kind of out of place for me yeah I, it worked for me because i agree with you it's different but it worked for me because this is rocket's movie and rocket being kind of out of commission for the entire thing i, I like that this kept him kind of ever present in the whole thing and i feel like it was able to in the other guardians movies it's always like uh, jokes will undercut the emotional tone nine out of ten times and mm -hmm. i feel like this movie doesn't do that like i don't think at all which is like credit to them because james gunn usually fucks that up um but i think here it's more of having like the action set pieces have the jokes and stuff and then the flashbacks are kind of that more way more serious that's thing. the grounded story so it's like yeah. i think that it kind of like worked there where it not those moments we had to keep coming back to to like separate from the more the levity of the rest of it yeah. the only tiny nitpick i have about the flashbacks is the transition shots that they used like whatever effect the yeah. the little like it just felt like any in and out of uh, it out just of felt like anybody would anything. use those flashbacks that they bought from fucking pond five or something <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. i wasn't a huge fan of that yeah so uh, through the flashbacks we find out about his, his friends you know they have funny names great for them it's a fucking walrus it's a goddamn seal <laughs> and it's a them. bunny all right they're all dead anyway what do i have to yeah. about Lila. i'll tell you what though find a heart this is what i love I about. Lila like and teeth's and floor yeah great cool <laughs> floor God, your heart I, I would i would have put you out of your misery a long time ago if i was rocking in there you know Heartless. but the <laughs> the the character designs of these is so 1980s like kids movie it was a toy store like, to me <laughs> we're like we are not going to pull punches this is going to give kids a nightmare no dude floor the is going with to the destroy thing. people that's yeah terrifying and i love that james gunn was like eh this is, what, this is my vision what for is? this. They're like, oh, he's out. So let him do whatever he wants to do. It's fine. Uh, like, but they're, uh, what, Bash 89. You know, Rocket's super smart, though. So the High Evolutionary, who we haven't talked about, but is the main bad guy here. Yeah. I love the High Evolutionary. I fucking love him. I, and I think that's not going to be the most popular take. But sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You go for it. Oh, I was going to say, what, I, I'm curious to see where, where he's going to rank on our, on our uh, Ragu Bagu list. Because I thought that performance was compelling the Great entire performance. way through. Great. Great performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like the, you know. I liked what he was up to. What? 
I thought you were going to keep doing high evolutionary talk. Oh, I mean, just to keep it real quick here, it's like I, I just love that and we've seen before, like like a guy that thinks he's a god and wants to create everything, wants to rule everything, whatever. I think the difference with this one is like it, there's a, a more pure evil to him than we're used to seeing. And yeah. I think it's he believes it. And it's like the, because he believes it, the people around him believe in him. And the turn later where it's like the thing that defeats him overall is his own people turning on him, I think is like extremely like poignant and important to him being a god that is he falls apart because his creation is better than him and smarter than him mm -hmm. and i th that but, to me i think kind of like centers this in a way that allows him oh he's just an evil bad guy it's like no no, no. he like there is way more to that but the, the depth of that and it just riff off that for a second is that his whole motivation is getting that creation back because he knows it's better and smarter mm -hmm. than him and that's why it's such an interesting thing, because you know from the get-go, you're like, we've seen this story before, right? This is his white whale. It's going to destroy him. 100%. It's going to be fascinating to see how it does that. And this is the first time we've ever seen, like, a sort of, not, not nihilistic, but like a totalitarian leader get basically taken over, or, or at least his people fight back because he pushes it too far. Mm -hmm. You would think Thanos, is, at some point, people were like, hey, bro, <laughs> you're pushing this a little too far, too, with the whole half the universe thing, but it didn't happen there. It's pretty fascinating. I have one tiny uh, nitpick as well regarding the... Uh, after every kind of of these little flashbacks, we get Lila, I believe, saying like, "It's great to have friends," and like, it's a lot. That uh, uh, though the that sort of line is something that I would hear in like a super twisted episode of Rick and Morty or mm -hmm. South Park or something, when you know something awful is about to, or like animals, these little creepy animal creatures saying, "It's great to have friends," while like cutting up people and stuff. Like that line felt like a little. Just a little odd to me. I don't it know. It skates a line of being like a little too much and like a little too much. We need you to fucking really hurt yeah, later. We're really pushing this yeah. up because, I mean, the third, fourth time you say it, you're like, you're dead. You're going to die. Yeah. That's the whole point. We get it. We Loved know. it. We all knew they would die. They have to. They have to. For Rocket to be the sole survivor, sad boy. Um, But yeah, like I was shoving all this in here. They walk him around. He's smarter. They don't understand why he's different. Uh, of course, at one point, all they, they reveal the big plan that they're going to, you know, go ahead and gas all these guys with ba basically like Secret of the Uzus, and they're going to make him into anamorphic dudes, uh -huh. and they're going to put him on a plane, so and that'll be the whole thing, yeah. yeah. But every time they do it, of course, they go mad, they're crazy. Uh, Rocket sees it once, and he's like, well, it's, but this connector thing's all wrong, right? You're giving them lead when you should be giving them carbon or whatever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're like, You what? need to give them Gatorade and Vicks. Exactly. You know? So, uh, you know, Rocket goes back to his cage, and then eventually gets pulled out by a drunk uh, high evolutionary. Love the scene. Who's like it shows that, that it worked. You were right. How did you fucking know that? Like blah blah blah. He, this is what you're talking about. Um, uh, then of course reveals that, this is good. We're all going back to the the super happy planet anyway, right? He's like you're a fucking moron. You know this, but you don't know the fact that I'm just gonna kill you. Like no, you're not going. Your whole batch is gonna get destroyed. At which point Rocket tells them all back there. Then uses his rocket abilities and smarts to make a little key card. So awesome. You know, opens the door. But of course, High Evolutionary is waiting for him. Immediately uh, grabs him there. But do you think at some point? There was a repair guy on this ship who was like, I've been meaning to get to those locks because every time you put the key through, it like sparks and shocks you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's not, I, think, I think the normal <laughs> keys don't do that. I think it's the, it, the super key. Oh, it's his key. It's that the he way, yeah, yeah. Ro a rocket's thing is shorting them out on purpose. It's, it's like when we would touch the shock mic, you know? Yeah, okay. shock, like, Makes, we'll, we'll fix, fix it eventually. Probably something you need to worry about. He mauls the face of the high evolutionary, leaving him on the ground. But of course, the troops show up and then they shoot and then they don't, Rocket gets a gun and he shoots them and that's great. But then he turns around and all his friends are dead. Dude, it's fucking brutal. We we knew it was coming, but it was like, how are they gonna do it? And I just think they did it. We it also missed Layla get shot or Lyla, yeah, yeah, and talking. That was super sad. Oh my god, it's just all fucking sad. Them naming themselves, like getting to this point, like some of Rock's it, it's guy. it's like that heavy handedness, but like it worked for me because of their innocence and because like they that all they have is each other. They truly believe they're gonna get out and see the sky, like all of that, and like seeing Rocket kind of learn how to speak and like the fact that he learns to speak through his homies, but then also through the high evolutionary and they have that, the back and forth of like the, the, I can't, and he's a like, cons, like all that shit. I was yeah. like, this is really, really, really cool. And also the fact that he names himself Rocket. It's beautiful. He's man. the rocket. And he's like, I want to, that's what I want to do. I want to get out. I want to I, like basically fly my friends around in a rocket. Like, shocker for me who cries about everything. Like I didn't feel a goddamn thing through this whole sequence. What? You're finally one of us. Until animal heaven. I mean, yeah, and we'll get to that later. Yeah. I mean, we'll get to I was going to we'll have him later. What's up, Just Kevin? really quick. When uh, he sees the rocket, it's before they have the conversation of the names. But, like, already in that moment, I think it's very clear that, like, oh, shit, this is why he calls himself Rocket. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's so good. Like, uh, that, that was a really solid moment for me. Yeah.
Uh, so anyways, like I said, they get this data, they look at the data, then they figure out, well, this isn't even the key we need. We're looking for basically a passcode, right? So we can deactivate Rocket's uh, defenses on his heart. Uh, it's the Konami. Code. It got it got del- it got uh, downloaded right before this. Well, who could have downloaded? What could have downloaded? Oh, it's that fat guy with the thing on the side of his head. All right, cool. That guy. You know what I mean? Reminds me a lot of Otho from Beetlejuice. Not Otho in Beetlejuice, but the actor who was then in Demolition Man wearing a similar outfit. Oh, of course. So there's. It's funny that you mentioned that because the two <laughs> movies that I fucking kept flashing to in this was Demolition Man and Fifth Element. Yeah. Whatever reason, those visual Multi-pack. cues were just like everywhere the fifth member the fifth element cop suits yeah. are like super big and kind of bulky that remind me of the uh the organic suits that nathan fillion and his team wear now when nate when uh um i was gonna say nathan fillion when star lord draws who the bad guy is right when they're on earth yeah i thought he drew the high evolutionary like i didn't i remember that he was drawing the other dude yeah he's drawing the other dude to get the, yeah. key, the keys with but also by the way can we just talk about Drax wanting to lay down on this couch. I was like, that's Kevin. Oh my like, God. <laughs> like, what was it designed for? Kevin, try, like, Drax just laying down and be like, come on, like, have some mad. And then cutting back to him and him, like, slowly leaning over. Like, that to me is like peak James Gunn comedy. Oh, so funny. Um, the and, one thing Andy, I. Andy, Andy, I do want to say that I saw it and I was like, oh, yeah. Kevin, <laughs> I get it. Feel that that's me. That. That's yeah, me. 100%. Um, if there's a couch, I'm going to lay on it. <laughs> what do they call this planet? It's like alternate Earth. Counter- we're still not Counter- there yet, Texan. Eh. Oh, I thought that's where he drew the picture at. But we're still, remember on the thing, he saw the guy. We draw the picture after we know what uh, the guy looks like to put it into the thing uh, to do the stuff. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, 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 but we're not that far off. I just want to toss in, of course, that, of course. <laughs> It was earlier uh, revealed in one of these, not flashbacks, but re- tied to flashbacks. The High Evolutionary created the Sovereign, who then, of course, created Adam Warlock. And so now the whole deal is that, like, you're, I'm your fucking god. Go get this thing for me. I need to know the information. So, blah, blah, blah. Or else. Or I'll destroy everyone, yeah, basically. Or I'll destroy yeah, the so that's yeah. important. And shout out to uh, Elizabeth Bicky also for just being in, like, five scenes in this movie. And, and then kind of dying. owning them. Like, just being yeah. dis- disheveled as hell, like, compared to how we saw her last time. And I, I love the time, I think it was right here, where we see her, and then the High Evolutionary walks up, and they give him a little thing to stand on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can so look funny. down on her. Yeah, that, that was, was awesome. great. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, though, yeah, they figure out, okay, cool, where we have to go? We have to go to Counter-Earth. What is it? Counter-Earth. Counter-Earth. Yeah. Counter-Earth. Yeah. Uh, so they're like, all right, cool, we're going to Counter-Earth. They fly up on Counter-Earth. This looks just like Earth. They land. It all looks like Earth, except it is all the anamorphic animals walking around doing their Bunch thing. Bunch of furries. This is where I wish we spent more time. I wish we could have figured out a way to do less flashbacks, even though they were all poignant and definitely added to the story, or put, or, or reorganize those in a different way, because this is where it's like the fish out of the water moment, where they have to figure out what's going on. And we spent like all of five minutes here before they solve the problem of like, okay, go to the big... The See, giant that, monolith that's over I, there is probably where we're going. And yeah, I understand it. Yeah, cool, interesting stuff could have been done here. Yeah. But I feel like even though we're do, we're do such a short amount of time on there, it felt kind of long. I don't know if that made I don't well, know if it was super with didn't work. Yeah. Now, the fact that we couldn't communicate with them, that, that nobody, that was, nobody that was had weird. a translator thing that would have gone. I know it's a new language. I get all that. I'm just yeah. saying like. It's a space goofy alien movie. I would yep. have preferred to be able to cross that boundary, I think. But I'm, go for it. I was going to say, but the idea, the setup of there's a, there's a whole other Earth looks like just like our Earth, but it's to- all these crazy Dr. Violin Moreau, like uh, yeah. uh, Moreau uh, creatures that are all over the place. That could have been so fun if they had gotten stranded there and they needed to team up with those people and do all that thing. But instead, we got kind of bogged down by the fact that there was the language barrier. And then they had the one Drax bit, and then it was like the be- the the ball bit that we saw in the trailer. Yeah, that was admittedly hilarious. But and and still made seen it. Yeah. yeah, less of a punch because we had seen it in the trailer. Unfortunately, uh, it's just the way it goes. Nick, you laugh very loud. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed even louder when I saw it in the trailer. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wish like I, I like this is a, such a great setup, right? This is other Earth that's supposed to be idyllic and perfect, and there's that one little scene where they drive by and someone's beating the other person for drugs, yeah, I think it was, yeah, with meth. Plus, right? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's cr- like, that's an, that, that is an interesting theme to explore in this movie, which we kind of do via the grand uh, evolutionary, but not really. So, so that's my thing is like, I'm totally with you guys. Even after my second watch, I'm still kind of like, I wish we were here better, not necessarily longer, just like better. Like better. Um, but uh, my second watch did kind of put it in a uh, frame of reference that I it enjoyed it and took a lot more away from it. Like one of the themes of this movie is like, save the living creatures like look out for living creatures and that's not just the advanced ones it's all of them especially where the the end of this movie um they talk about right. yeah we have to save all the higher beings or Even whatever it is and, and and when we see rocket save the raccoons and save all the, the noah's ark shit and like all the animals being saved and, and all of that and animals and the obelisks and, and and everything right but i love the literal humanizing of animals on mm-hmm. counter earth like i feel like that was like a strong point and like the second rewatch for me i was like okay 
I think a lot of the, like, what's going on here of just seeing that they are just like us, even though they aren't like us, and, like, the good and the bad and mm -hmm. all of it, and the fact that the high evolutionary was going to just raise it all and was, was raising hell on this whole thing, like, that it, made the it worked a lot better for me in terms of the context of what the story of this movie was actually doing, as opposed to it just being, hey, they could have had more adventures here, because they could have, but, like, I feel like for the points they were trying to make, I think it backed it up really well. And that may be the reason for the language barrier, like, trying to have have like uh, we are personifying animals and showing you that that these aren't just like things that you could just let die you know so yeah totally. but it's a double edged sword so to, to show them though like with very very human qualities and then not have them be able to i guess they were competent but not they have them be able to communicate with the characters that we love for me it put a weird barrier between me and them where i was like i don't care about these people which is strange i would have um, eaten them I just want, I, will, I do want to say good use <laughs> of the, the word, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, one was an octopus. I mean, fried up. Yeah. Oh, my God. Calamari. I do want to give Tim a shout out for the use of the word raising in that, in that context. They used it. I know, I but the fact that you are now, it's part of your lexicon. Now, yeah. Super Here funny. I am. Here I am. And if you notice, I, I uh, hesitated on it. So then I said raising hell afterwards. So. You backed out of it. I did back you did out. That I, did, I appreciate the shout out, but oh, I, you, you know, next time I'll be more confident. So everything we said has happened there, right? And eventually the bat lady points at the tower thing and like, okay, they're over there when he draws a little picture of uh, Otho that's not Otho. And again, not Otho from Beetlejuice, but the character actor who played Otho in Beetlejuice that I am now referencing from, from Demolition. Demolition Man. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Gotcha. I'm not trying to, also, I'm not trying to animal shame here. Could we not have picked a more cuter animal human hybrid than a than bat? bat? Like they just said, all, animal, all life matters. Andy, what you just said is the reason why it had to be a bad family. Had to be done. It had to be. We, we have to normalize bad people. Like, we also, had to care about them. Also, then we got to we look had at, to we, see their photos all over the wall, which I thought was, was hilarious. That was hilarious. That was funny as shit. <laughs> but also, like, the mom then being like, okay, take the car, and then it being very clear that... Um, what, None of them know how to alone. drive. Yeah, yeah, can't drive it's stick. Fucking funny. Like someone should have done that. In the fucking car. That was Great. awesome. That was my favorite joke in the movie Great. where they're arguing, uh, uh, trying to teach her how to open the door or whatever, and then just get the fucking car. <laughs> um, this next part, the next series of events that happen here, though. Oh, open the fucking door is what it is. <laughs> uh, Groot and, and uh, Star Lord go off. They hide the guns and them all that jazz. We're going to get to the well, part. Groot's yeah, you're right. Sorry. No, no. Um, they leave, like, Rocket's dying. We know that Adam Warlock is, is, it could be attacking at any moment. And for whatever dumb reason, Drax is like, no, let's go help Peter. It's like that. Th this part to me is where it starts to get really sloppy and where the movie starts like blocking it's Drax. wise. It's Drax, but, and I, and, but they're like, oh, Drax is an idiot. And that's his theme. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. I feel like we already explored that in the other movies and he's evolved beyond that. But I just think that the, the, the third act of this movie gets really sloppy. But them I mean, getting like trapped on the ship for no reason. The, the motivations of them getting everyone in one place kind of, I think, could have been better done. It, and that's why I think this stuff starts feeling rushed to me. So I'm like, ooh, that's weird. Why would they have him do that? And when I start questioning characters' motivations that are way outside of like what would happen in that world, it seems crazy to me. I'd say it was not necessarily motivations to get people in certain places. I think it was more motivations to get characters to fully realize their arc when we yes. get the moments with Nebula being like, all you all do is fuck up and you mantis you are like worthless and this and that like we we need them to mess up somehow i agree with you i think it's still kind of silly like that's, it's that's kind of a means to like, an end sort of you know that's why it's so hard to have character arcs in the third act of yeah. the movie or the, the, the third movie in a trilogy is it's like all right guys we've kind of like these people all know each other more than that and i don't it, it's hard for, for all of these characters to necessarily need that big arc especially when we're talking about rocket and seeing what he's going through and that's just Super, 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 like a big deal. And that's why Lord of the Rings is the best trilogy of all time. Clearly. No arcs. Don't need them. Uh, so anyways, though, they get into the ship, uh, which we don't know is a ship. We think it's just HQ for a while. Pretty cool. Right? I like this. We meet High Evolutionary uh, with them. And Not I a love... trap. If you know it's a trap, it's a, a face-off. Yeah, That's fucking awesome. And I love the interior sort of... Uh, there's not a whole lot of set design. There's not like a whole lot of practicality in these sets. But I love the overall kind of like this is what the aesthetic is of the inside of this dude's sort of ship and his mm -hmm. throne and the red cubes and everything. I thought that shit looked really cool. I'll say again to render another criticism and then I'll shut up. Um, what the disappointing fact, a disappointing factor for me was when they go up against the Grand Evolutionary and they kind of high beat him easy. High Evolutionary, sorry, and they kind of beat him easier than i thought they would beat him grant said he's got he's got like he's like i took some of my mind and i made this incredible gravity device thing and then they kind of easily overcome that kind of felt like wait a minute it's just going to come down between ant-man and kane just punching each other at the end of this thing it's kind of weird it deflated his character a little bit for me this character that i thought was like oh in certain sectors of the galaxy they think he's god 
And then uh, I guess Star-Lord can just beat him with some guns. It's kind of weird to me. Cool um, I, prosthetics I... on the face, I thought. Oh, yeah. You read? It was a I thought it was badass. I like they called him Robocop because he looked like Robocop. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Kev, go ahead. I was going to say, I thought that a lot of his like power and all that is more of the like technology the fear. and all <laughs> yeah. of the like he's like wizard and wizard of Oz. yeah exactly where like he's he just is just a man who has this you know gravity science. thing to defend himself but like yeah it's it's all the science and these giant companies that he owns with all these monsters that he can like turn on people and once the ants realized they could overtake the crickets or grasshoppers in bugs life remember that then they realize Wow, they don't want to see us together. They don't want to see us fighting I, with I, one I'm another. I'm not sure how that rep is mm -hmm. pertinent. To Anyways, while well, they confront I'm the high Andy. evolution, <laughs> thank area, you, Kevin. right? And there, it's the face off, and it's the thing. Uh, Adam Warlock so shows up though? to it's attack. Face off. Why? Yeah, he takes his face off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that show was yeah. horrifying. <laughs> it was fucking horrifying. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't happen here though. Right? No, it's way no, later. Okay, okay. Uh, back of the ship, Gamora was protecting Rocket, but then Adam Warlock. No, the War Pig showed up, right? And yeah. they fought the War Pig, and the, off and Rock Then, then, uh, then, uh, then, uh, then, uh, then so Adam scary. Warlock showed up, but then she starts the the, the the ship, and she flies the ship, and she's not good at flying the ship. And they're playing a, a Mowgli song that I like a lot called San Francisco. San Francisco. Fuck yeah, yeah I, dude. And it's like one of it's like so many other songs get their like hero moment. And that was one if you know that song. Like because I, I was I'm watching SF, so I expect there to be a pop, but it was so quick. Like you hear San Francisco, but if you don't know the song, you don't know it's the same. It comes back like three times. Yeah, and, but, but like little, little bit. Exactly. I'm, I'm totally you with never you though, I yeah. was hoping when we came back to Gamora, it was gonna be, come on, come on, so let's sick. feel yeah. the love. You know what I mean? Weakest, Great song. Ne weakest ne needle drops, though. I'm gonna be honest. I disagree after a second watch. Mm. I'm in love with love and the this is the great song. Gotcha. Anyways, uh, sing it. <laughs> they they do the thing. They almost run over Star Lord. You know they they had done the thing up there and fought the guy and like this is where it gets into crazy action that I can't. You know, again, not to mention they're all in the same fucking place too from the rest of the thing. So like you know he lifts the ship out of the ground. And he starts blowing up the planet because he's gonna raise the place because it's like yo it failed again. They're dealing with the fucking octopuses Back dealing with the formula. Yeah, exactly. Every single all roads lead to meth. <laughs> Get away from it. You know what I mean? No matter how many plans we make, <laughs> yeah. these people yeah, are just all meth. dealing meth. Ah! Wow. They fucking love <laughs> meth, god damn it. Um, Alex G3B in chat says apes together strong. Good. Exactly. Oh, the great Thank trilogy. You. So uh yeah, that happens right. And so what happens is uh, the Guardians on the ship get off the ship to get back to their ship, and then Drax and Mantis get onto the ship yeah. uh, that is the, the the High Inquisitor's ship, and then they get inside and they find children, just fucking bags and bags of children everywhere. You know what I mean? Dick's shaking your head. What? What? Don't you like that? Oh, it's like Costco for children. They got so many kids. When you left, I was just saying I don't love the blocking of this. I think this the third act going into the third act was the weakest part of this movie, just because of the motivations of moving Drac from the plane. They were like, we can't figure out how to get Drac and Mantis over there, so Drax is going to get Drax. Uh, uh, and, and he's just gonna grab Manus and Connor to being over there. Yeah. She's like, oh my god, stop the thing, stop the thing. It just felt weird. And the fact that they get on the ship while Peter and the other people, and they had to be like, oh, I can't communicate. It's, it, it all felt like kind of sloppy, kind of lazy writing of, we can't figure out how to get these characters onto the ship, so let's just Whatever, we'll just get them on there. Yeah, I feel you. This is a, yet another like potential death moment of like every different combination of people might die where Nebula. Um, Mantis and Drax are outside the ship and they start going outside and they're like they're freezing starting to freeze out and then they like get in and all these damn kids what do the kids sound like bloop, bloop, bloop. what do they say doop, 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 doop. <laughs> that's, the, that's not here though the freezing right them outside of the ship yeah because Drax bangs as they're, as they're going up he like bangs the door and like to get into the thing with the kids yeah and kid, yeah like, but we're doop, okay doop, doop. so now hold on we just talked about the freezing of star lord and yeah. adam warlock didn't we no no no, 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 what, no. what were you talking about that on freezing of drax yes, i know that's my confusion drax nebula okay yeah. uh anyway they're in upper, Neb upper space nebula can't freeze yeah. though remember she's got the robotic so it should be fine and, and mantis is like it's cold it's up cold. here and she's like starting to fucking freeze yeah i remember this uh, so they get in the ship or whatever uh then they find the children on top of children on top of children with their yo -yubs. Uh, this is you know this leads up to the whole thing. Drax, Drax at, doing monkey sounds because he knew that. Then also the reveal that he could actually talk to the children, which was great. Uh, it's the idea of you know get away from the starbird because they're gonna blow the hole in that. Meanwhile, back on the other ship, right? They've got the key, so they get in. They Wait, real quick the get away from the starbird thing. Anyone else think that's stupid? Can you imagine being a little kid yeah. in a like ship, just be like, oh fuck the they're starboard. Smart. Like what? What? Which way do you think the front of the ship is? These kids are geniuses. Do they know? Oh, they, they know they space. Are, actually, yeah. you're right, Andy. They were geniuses. Mm -hmm. They just can't create. They helped build the ship probably when they were like working doing Rock like slave labor stuff. And I like, I love, I love the. You know what? 
My, you remind me of my daughter with Drax. Oh, oh. sweet. Yeah, that was oh. sweet. God, it, it, Dave Bautista. You calls them morons or whatever. I, I know everybody says that, like, Rocket is, like, the main character. I think Drax is probably my favorite of this whole trilogy. It's because he reminds you of me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> Don't deny it. Don't deny <laughs> it. I thought everyone did great. I think the performances in this movie, like everyone, like Chris Pratt, was just like, "You're so fucking yeah, like, yeah. really like, talented." They're all they're all just fucking great. Just want to uh, point out that Kevin I, got super butthurt by that just now. He was like, "He literally said the director reminds me of me." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Groot really like, was the one. Out, yeah. I, I feel like uh, character wise, like Groot had some fun action moments, but otherwise, like he felt the most disconnected from how he used to be. And Groot and Rocket's connection, I I really was missing any level of like. Their bromance or like family, like father son type situation they have going on. In but we movie. got to hear just straight up Vin Diesel, like no voice, no tone changing or pitch shifting or anything like that. It was just Vin Diesel, Vinny D, did saying not, I am Groot. Did not get that moment. Oh, at the, I thought you were talking about the very yeah, end. I thought you were saying when he no, came no, 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 no. That's later. Okay. That's that's for later. Yeah. That's for later. Unfortunate. Okay. All right. Um. Well, why is it unfortunate? Because it was cringe. I didn't like that. Why? Yeah. But like once it like, once you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Why do we think about it, Kev? Well, because we oh understand God. what he's Your saying, finally. Oh, I know. It's been busted all day. Don't worry. Right? So, yeah, that, I want, uh, that's what I was hoping you're yeah, going yeah, towards. Yeah. We're on the, I, my interpretation of that line isn't that Groot spoke English. It's that we've been along. We are, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. been with Groot so long. We yeah, can understand. totally get it. Still didn't work for me. Like, oh, but, gotcha. Why are you heartless? I, I like it more into like that framing for sure. Heartless. I will say, like, there were several moments when we watched these trailers and did our reactions early on. And even in this movie and when Twitter's releasing clips like with the open the fucking door scene, where I was like, Oh, they show that already? Yeah. That's like yeah, they had put that on Twitter. And some people had assumed that like, oh, I bet you this is a world where you can't curse. So that's like bleaked out. That's part of the in-joke or whatever. Um, but watching Groot in this movie, there were several shots. And I'm like, God, he just looks kind of odd. And like, that's just yeah. a dude in a helmet. This looks weird. And it's just CG the whole time. But like, there's several moments where I just think it's a dude in a helmet because his head is so fucking wide. Uh, but it's just really convincing CG. <laughs> so, like, it still looks not great to me in a lot of moments. I didn't like the way Groot's sort of structure Stocky. looked. Yeah, yeah I um, agree with that. Look, sort of steroids, you know? Like, they yeah. kind of put some... Uh, well, it's, what do they plant, put in the soil? Plant food. Plant, plant food. food. Oh, yeah. got you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. It's not, it's it's not just crawling around. And, oh, weird. <laughs> weird. Why was he able to connect it back to his body, too? I thought oh, I was, I, when they did that, I was like, oh, he's going to be ahead the rest of the movie. No, it's it was he growing. Like, regrew it back. Like, yeah, but then he fleshed it out, like, instantaneously, like... He's a tree man. Tree man. Okay. Yeah. He also goes. So the difference is uh, before when he got killed in Guardians One, and they took the stick and replanted it, that was creating life, and so that guy couldn't grow as fast and as big. He's a baby. It's yeah, it's happening. It's like every we time we saw baby Groot extend his arms hella big. It's like every time you shave a hair, it grows back stronger. So how can you kill a Groot? You have to like burn just burn, like, explode yeah, burn him it. into a million pieces, and then it's they can't the come. Thing. They can't come back together. That's but if you plant thing. those million pieces, you get a million baby Groots. Yeah, yeah, that's my thing, right? Like why? Why do you think the collector was so impressed by him? He's like, I've never seen this species before. You are, you are amazing. I want you. You know, three species. Well, I think he. I think. That, I mean, the collector was so impressed with him because he'd never seen the species before. He wants them. I don't think necessarily the thing that he wanted out of him was either that. Well, I can either have a, ma- a million baby groots or I can have one big groot. I don't think that's what he was saying. If, I'll <laughs> say this: If I'm the rest of the Guardians and I see him grow back that strong, I'm like, I'm pulling Groot aside, like. What are you drinking at night? Hey, we wasted a doing? lot of fucking time with that baby version. What kind of, of <laughs> you know, you could have helped us out we, a lot of fights. We, yeah, we wasted time with that fucking stinky Did the old Groot version. just want to die? <laughs> Wait, is that his whole thing? He's like, <laughs> we are Groot, and that was his thing. He's like, dead, dead, you know? Death Bloom. You ever see that? No. <laughs> so, yeah, I think plants do. Succulents, I think. I don't know. I can call Jen if you want. But it I, sounds like a dead, uh, like, uh, like an old uncle. Be like, death <laughs> Bloom. You heard of that kid? <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't heard of Deathloom, you don't know shit. <laughs> ah, fuck. I don't know anymore. We're so the yeah. So they got Rocket's code now. They do the thing, but it's too late. He flatlines. Uh, Peter Quill again. You want to talk about Chris Pratt acting his ass off here, mm. screaming at him, being sad. Ah, so Gamora's good. like, let it go. He's fucking dead. He's just a raccoon. What do you care about? They've done a whole bunch of raccoon jokes, by the way. I'm not a raccoon. I'm not a raccoon. Uh, we get the flashback, or not the flashback. We get the we get to go to uh, we get heaven. You get to, yeah, we get to go to robot animal heaven. heaven. You know what I mean? <laughs> just it's right you. next door to robot heaven. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Reminds me of Spider Man rewatch and Nick going. Uh, next up, we cut to Uncle Ben in heaven. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, you Nick know. Carboni was like, "Yes, we do. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing yeah, wrong yeah, with yeah, it." Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Layla Lila comes out and she talks to him, and it's a very sweet scene. He apologizes. This got me choked up. This is the rocket yeah. scene that got me choked up where he apologized for not this being able to save them. Getting, like, oh my God. I'm looking at Joey, and she's just like wiping her eyes. I'm, like, I'm wiping my eyes too. Like, this, this part from here on out is just like a constant mess, open mouth crying. Yeah. End game style. And so, you know, the other idiots are there too. And he's like, Can I hang out with y'all? And she's like, Yeah, but not now. You got more work to do. You I know fucking I mean? love it, man. I just not, got chills you just yeah, saying yeah. it. I, I love this little crew. Them dying is so sad. This moment of him almost dying, being accepted back, but her being like, Not yet. Like, that's the theme. You need second chances. Like, he, there's second chance Everybody in life. All this shit, man. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, Rocket's gotten like a million chances. Let's be real, though. I fucking got. Right. I would have fucking disbanded. I would have been like, Get the. F You're not allowed in this crew anymore. You try to kill so many of us you know yeah. stop stealing batteries <laughs> <laughs> you're reckless <laughs> we were fine we were fine if you hadn't you ever, stolen that battery you ever have your friend that every time we'd go to like a walgreens he'd steal batteries like, what are you doing, what are you doing? Like, fucking stealing stuff yeah. stealing batteries you're so he comes it. back he's alive hooray and then they call up to the other guardians like let's get together and they're like well we're actually fucking up in the space we left space but we're there and, and then mantis they they're happy they pop that right rockets alive like yeah that's great and then uh, you gotta get back up there, right? That's what's the deal. So like, well, they, they call the guard. They call Craglin, and Craglin comes, and like he's With got fucking nowhere Dude, as the shit. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. So yeah. Oh right, because they gotta save all the babies. They got all the kids. I forget. The... Did they... Sorry, go ahead, Kev. I was gonna say the way it like opens up the like portal, time the space, he the yeah. hexagon portals. Um. Did they? I forget. Did they? Did the planet blow up completely? Nowhere. No, 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 the, no, yeah, the, yeah, the they, counter, earth, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they got off the whole as planet. It blew up, blew up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, for me, that, yeah, kind of deflates the ending of like, let's save these five raccoons. Like, we just fucking billions of people just died on this planet well, down they, below they, us, but whatever. They couldn't control that. Yeah. Like, they, they're heroes. No they're, aren't they supposed to? Those, <laughs> again, the whole point don't forget, those, those animals were ugly. We didn't care about them. Well, they were yeah. bats. This yeah. wasn't like a Sokovia situation. This is just to show how fucked up that high evolutionary is and what he'll continue he'll do to do. It was an Alderaan situation. Yeah. There's no sure. saving. It's too late. Yeah, well. And so... <laughs> had the, be better. Had the high, evolutionary, had the better high evolutionary already fought his people? W did they flip out when he was blown up This is up where the nowhere comes, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I know. Like, yada, yada, yeah, yada. I'm saying, He's like, I'm going to blow you Or is that up. after the fact that then... Uh, probably right out. Oh, it was right after the Why, fact. What pushes him over? Why did the people turn on him? Because I don't think they were wanting him to blow up the planet, right? They're like, so, I think they were just like, stop fucking fighting, dog. Because he was like, I'm trying to get uh, rocket. Like, rocket. I, I need I, rocket. I'm smart. I know that's right. Like, that, what the fuck? No, that like, lady that's his second in command has been in a lot of things. That actor. And I can't, I got I meant to look up what she what else she was in, but she, her point was like, hey, you're doing all you're sacrificing an awful lot for like one raccoon. And sure. He's like it's not just one raccoon. And who's the animal girl doing all the in the background? David Jones' locker. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Kieran Knightley. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah nowhere it shows up. They do the little bridging, docking thing. Then there's a fight, you know, all over the place, and they're doing fights and stuff. And then they fight the high evolutionary, and they beat his ass eventually. Oh, no, 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 Yeah. This part, Nick, I agree with you, blocking-wise of, like, where some of the characters are. Like, it was a little clunky to get there. But where we got of them being separated, I thought really was in service of the movie, of allowing the character moments to build between them to get to the the final moments of them separating and it making sense. Like, specifically having Nebula, Drax, and um, Mantis together. I think the conversations they had when they were facing off against the uh, obelisk that came towards them, like, mm -hmm. and and also with all the kids stuff, like, it really did a yep, good yep. job of getting him in dad mode, creating the story that Mantis like hasn't been able to just be her own person, and even if she's with the like good right side of things, she still is just one of the guardians as opposed to like being her own person who now leads these three fucking creatures, and then uh, just Nebula, Nebula totally like realizing she is friends with these people and all that. I liked having this group together and, and having that set up. Meanwhile, obviously having um, everyone else save Rocket. And then when that group hears about Rocket, their reactions, I was like, fuck, this feels so good. good. So good reaction. earned to connect everyone together. But yeah, then we get the, it's team up time, baby. We're getting portals. Everyone's here together and Rocket's back. And the freaking scene, no sleep till Brooklyn plays, which I want to take a moment to just talk about this. I think one of my biggest criticisms of this film is the fact that it comes out in a world that we get superhero movies every two weeks. Some sure. good, some bad, some connected to MCU, some not. Doesn't fucking matter. James Gunn created this licensed music enhancing the, the motion picture type experience. Everyone else has copied it, including MCU. So we're at this point now where 
This is the second time we've heard No Sleep Till Brooklyn in the last month in a movie, and it doesn't hit uh-huh, because of that. that. But I think otherwise it would have, and I just hate that we live in this world that we can't take that context out. It is there. Well, I think the other thing, I mean, maybe I missed it in this, though, is a lot of the prior movies, the songs had thematic relevance to, like, what was going on, right? And they actually can't come back. They have a deeper meaning. In this one, it just felt like we were playing cool music and cool scenes. I, I think that it really tied in. How, in what way? Just, no Sleep Till Brooklyn. Well, not No Sleep Till Brooklyn. I mean, that was just more just, like, them them together. That one specifically, I don't have the Oh, I mean, I was just, I'm, 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 I'm contextually, I mean, like, Cherry Bomb tied in the first time around? Um, the Runaways, I don't know, punk rock, sure, maybe. I'm thinking Father and Son. I mean, things yeah, like that. Well, yes, like, okay. and I'm not going to argue that for right? me. Like, I'm just saying not the, again, all of that's them, the but... very specific at the end, you know, Yon But this dead. one, like, this one, I, I was, I love No Sleep Till Brooklyn. I'm a, a BC Boys fan, sure. But, like, I was expecting something that was a little bit more like, hey, this is like a crew of people coming together and doing some cool shit. I mean, I guess No Sleep Till Brooklyn is about partying, but it just didn't really, like, I think it didn't hit for me, not because it was we had heard it before, but it, could have been it was back an odd street, choice. Back. All right, then. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, that would have been incredible, right? <laughs> it just, it just to me, it was it was like an, a, a slightly more obvious choice than what I would expect from James Gunn on the third movie. It, it just didn't, it didn't line up hundred percent. But I honestly think it's because Mario. I think I Mario liked it. Mario didn't stop it for me. I liked it. I, I, I mean, I, I still enjoyed I still it. I just don't think it hit for me in the way that. You but like, if you don't. I mean, like when those music beats hit in all the other movies, like you're kind of wondering, like, God damn, this soundtrack and this OST, whatever, is going to be super loaded. Sure. And in this moment, I'm like, I wish I hadn't heard this in Mario. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that, that's where I'm at. Because like, otherwise, it fucking hits. And this scene is 10 out of 10 incredible. It's one shot for like two and a half fucking minutes. They just let the song play, and we get every single shot, every close-up of this anime-ass fight. It's a hallway scene, the entire team together. James Gunn going all out. Any ability they have, any weapon they have, fucking use it. Team up together. Like, this is up there with Portals. This is up there with Avengers 2012's one-shot camera thing. Like, this is easily the coolest team thing we've had in a Guardians movie. Like, this shit was fucking awesome. I I will say that I will will back that up 100% too. As, as, well, I didn't like necessarily the song choice. By about 15 minutes into the scene, as they're going through the hallway, I'm like, all right, we're getting into John Wick territory here. Mm -hmm. And that's the highest praise I could ever give any action sequence. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he he fucking nailed it. By the time he gets that far door, we're like, this is perfectly executed. It's so flashy and stylish, and by the end of it, Drax is throwing a fucking dagger to stick a dude's leg in the wall, or who was it? Drax who threw that dagger? When the, like yes, I just it was. It I was. just remember the dude on the wall, and the dagger hits his leg, and then he hangs by the daggers. Like God damn, dude, this was just so flashy and awesome, oh and again, super gory, yeah. like really violent, and kind of like you could tell what you see the hints of James Gunn that we see from Peacemaker and from the Suicide Squad. In this sequence, but it's with aliens, so it's not super violent because it's you don't see humans getting decapitated and stuff, you know. Yeah, but like the team up collab stuff, of awesome. Like Groot putting his arm out and then Rocket like running around it, and the camera following it. Like we see hallway scenes all the time, whether it is John Wick or Daredevil or something, but they're usually grounded because this is aliens and CGs everywhere. The camera's allowed to be a little bit more frenetic and wild, and this thing's just fucking spinning around, following like it'll like follow in on Gamora's feet for a little bit while as it kicks someone in the head comes out to like follow someone else i was like i i can't wait for the blu-ray of this just to be able to like yeah. watch it and like really like break down where the action is because it was incredible they do all that <laughs> that's greg yawns who's not an action fan <laughs> it was cool i liked it but i couldn't tell you like i'm like oh yeah that sounds right that. dagger i don't remember this at all this picture of greg on his third martini like oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was seeing this alamo popcorn <laughs> This giant fight. We had mots, mozzarella sticks, oh, wings. Oh, the Moss Montac. Yeah, well, the Moss Moss was in high effect last night. A pretzel and the, I was fucking living. I, I would like to say that I, I'd like to apologize to every viewer and listener wow. out there. Um, a crime occurred that night that we all watched it together. Andy, you don't have to. You don't have to say this. I have to, Nick. He has to. I didn't bring the pickle twang to the movie theater. And I sit down and Nick goes, damn it, you didn't see my text. I also bought a big bucket of popcorn. Two of us, two in- innocent men. <laughs> just normal men. <laughs> We're just normal men sitting down next to each other. Two big ass buckets of popcorn, not a pickle twang in sight. No pickle sauce for any of us. And it really ruined the experience because this is the first time I haven't 
just completely housed this fucking mm-hmm. bucket of popcorn. Mm-hmm. I ate like a fourth of it before I was done with it. Sour Patch Kids are really, really good. Yeah. Sour Patch Kids are great. They were really hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, and all the stuff we talked about is happening, right? So nowhere is docked and the thing's happening. Cosmo's doing it, but then Cosmo goes, like, I can't do it much longer. And then Mantis is like, yes, you can. <laughs> and he's like, I'm a big dog. I'm a good dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Craglin's there and he's playing air guitar or something and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that what you thought? <laughs> All these children of the corners run in and they run in. They're, oh, get you up. You're going to fucking die, you yeah. idiot. Uh, and then, you know, inside people are fighting and doing shit. And I don't know, Peter Quill, he's spinning guns and stuff. And then uh, Gamora, she's like, I'm green. And then, you know, Rocket's like, I'm going to go save all the animals. And he runs in there and he sees the raccoons and he gets raccoons and they're crawling on and being cute. It kills me, man. Like, and he just, opens this... it and it's North America raccoon. Dude, I, I, uh, this is just one of my favorite sequences that like, we've had in so long where I'll just, I just love the look of these things, man. I know that I'm, I'm biased where it's like, it's fucking Toretto that I'm looking at with like, <laughs> my dog. I'm like, I freaking, you're just so adorable. And I, it just makes you feel so connected and so much. But like seeing him go to get these guys, I just think that they did such a good job of the buildup of it, of it making sense. Of course, he's going to go want to save them. But the slow reveal of him realizing he's a raccoon, it's like James motherfucking gun. Like again, some of this stuff can be obvious, but when you get there and it's satisfying, even if it's you see it coming, that's when the movies, I think, at its most powerful. And like this scene to me really did that. Um, and again, kind of worrisome of like, even though, you know, James Gunn isn't going to kill Rocket in this ship with all these baby raccoons. Also, we're not going to have two near Rocket deaths, but there's still that inkling of like, is this where it's all going to end? And then we get high evolutionary with his stupid fucking glued on face. They come in, they fuck him up, you know, and then they they take Well, he's fucking up Rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing them all over the goddamn yeah, place. Yeah, well, he's got that TK ability, you know what I mean? It's cool. Yeah. I love the TK ordering fire. of this, this action scene. I love Rocket coming in and having his, like, I'm Rocket Raccoon. It's like, yes, you fucking are, my guy. And then him being the first to attack, but then having the whole team go through and it ending with Gamora is something that I've talked to some people and, like, they, they feel to be on the opposite side of me where they think it should have been Rocket to do the final blow. I, agree. I liked that it started with Rocket and it ended with Gamora, like, she is part of this team. The one furthest away it's different, from different, but it's like this was her moment of being like, hey, like, even though she's a variant, she is still Gamora, and she is still going to do what's right here. I love that. It's, uh, it's really reminiscent of all of the people holding hands and Rocket being the last one, the outcast of mm-hmm. the, the one who you mm-hmm. thought point. would be the furthest from, like, gelling with the group, yep. kind of being there for them. So, yeah, then they peel his face off right, and it turns out Rocket fucked him up real good. Good job, Rocket, back in the day. Uh, they get leave them there to die. They get all the an- they we, let's go. Let's get the animals. Like we need to get all the animals. It's about all the animals, and so they do. And they run and they jump on the ship. And everybody's like, "What the fuck?" And one of the I think a monkey attacks the woman immediately, which is like, yeah. "Yeah." I was like, "Yeah, Whoa. probably shouldn't have brought these Hilarious. stupid ass wild animals, should you?" That's a dumb move, fucking move, rocket you idiot. Um, no T Rex is there. No, Interesting. Sorry, they were too late on that one. Interesting. Um, what are they hiding? You know what I mean? Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's just like our God, and he just put the bones in the earth, you know, and exactly. throw us off. Thank yeah. you. you know what I mean? They're all a diversion. <laughs> um, it's all part of the plan. You'll see. And so, okay, and then, yeah, Peter's running, and he drops his Zune, and he doubles back for that. Because he's like, you know, okay, whatever, Peter. Get it for Rocket. Yeah. So he grabs <laughs> the Zune. I fucking love that, man. <laughs> Dou- doubles back for his fucking toy. He's going to get a MacBook back home. He's like, oh, shit, I I didn't need to turn into a fucking big fat face out there. (laughs) I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to sacrifice his life. Horrifying. I hated this. Yeah, he goes out there, though, and his face gets all bubbly. And you're like, oh, shit. I was like, here comes Gamora to save him. This will be like what they do instead. It's Adam Warlock. And I was like, huh, okay. So this shot here of of Peter obviously going back, getting the Zune, needs to do it, stories, themes, all that shit. Him jumping out of the ship, very reminiscent of Guardians 1, right? That first that iconic shot of him uh, in slow-mo and he's coming and you see all the debris and it kind of hits him and it's like immediately played as a joke both screenings people laugh at it because it does feel like he's gonna keep going but then there's that moment of realization of like oh no that stopped him and like he's just in space and I was like whoa holy shit he might actually die here and then um, having a golden boy uh, come Adam. through, sorry, Black Adam, uh, come through and, and, and get him. Can you imagine if it was Golden Boy, our friend? <laughs> Alex Mendez. I'm uh, going to save Star-Lord right now <laughs> before I get back to shoutcast in this League of Legends. One of the things where, on script, this makes sense. I get it. I still didn't like it. Felt like it came out of nowhere. But Yeah, because this is, of course, Adam's second chance, right? Is when yeah. Rocket saves him and doesn't kill him or whatever. Like, why'd you save me? But, you know, everybody deserves a second chance. He does it. He uses it here. And another one of these sort of like, we're going to fake you out moments, but I, 
I feel like I didn't need it only because it's like at the end of the film, I'm like, you're not going to do this right here, are you, James Gunn? And the fact that he didn't kind of made me more mad that he even put it in my head that he could do it. <laughs> like, I just, I, I don't know. I just didn't need this fake out here. Which one? It, it was traumatizing as fuck. Like, Peter it, Quill almost dying in space. And we talked right. about how, I, I talked about how in the Guardians 2 rewatch that the effect of them getting bloated, like when all of the Ravagers are being thrown out of the ship, so gross and just so like visually awful to see. And to see this happen to, I mean, it's it's fucking Tony Stark with half his face like melted off. You know, that's what kind of this reminds me of. And Tony Stark just famished, <laughs> yeah, he's starving. He's like, man, I haven't eaten since fucking eleven. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like I necessarily needed this, but it's a good way to have. It's another means to an end, which is kind of what Nick and I were talking about. Of like, you need these things to happen in order, in order for a character's arc to be fully realized, and that's where we get the Adam Warlock character arc. Of course, from that we get the Roundup on Nowhere, right? Where we're gonna talk about what happens next. Peter Quill is gonna go to Earth. He's, <laughs> he's uh, you know, the Guardians are basically disbanding, kind of, right? He's gonna go back to Earth, find his grandpa, see if he's alive, and also just sort of shit out. Uh, he uses the lily pad uh, mantis slash Drax uh, metaphor that had been given earlier, which I really appreciated. He's going to jump in the water, he says, which is cool, again, that they didn't make him and Gamora get together. Um, uh, you know, we had the conversation uh, uh, earlier, of, like, that we would have been good together. We see Gamora go uh, mm -hmm. off with the Ravager. Incredible lines. To be a Ravager, yeah. Uh, Mantis, as we said, is going to go off on her own, just, you know, do her own thing. Uh, Drax is going to hang back and stay, stay with uh, 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 Nebula and, you know, run the, the, the fucking nowhere. nowhere, yeah, with all these goddamn yub yubs running around. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, because they're going to get into everything. They're, you you know what I would do? They're going to get into everything. Let me tell you what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> These kids are going to be just uncontrollable. Like just I would open everything. up a candy shop yeah. and a dentistry. The, oh, my God. I'd be raking it in, dude. Yeah. Where are they going to get money from? That's Who knows? <laughs> well, whatever, right they do, yeah. whatever they do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we see uh, the little cuts Sad of everybody. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Say goodbye. Drax waves, right? Gamora. Oh. Or, uh, Mantis and him are, you know, have their little moment. And then Mantis runs off with the battery eaten monsters that I totally left out of my recap. But you remember the Probably. goddamn movie. You paid for it. Uh, and then, of course, you, paid for you it. fucking idiots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, then Peter goes back to Earth, gets reunited with the grandfather. Uh, super, super good moment there. You know what I mean? Again, I don't know if it was what I needed, but I liked it. Um, and then we get, you know, credits. And then you get your first post credit scene, right? And it's Rocket with the new Guardians there. They're all wearing the, ro the Guardian uniform, by the way. They got a Guardian uniform now. I, one of my favorite things, uh, the end of the movie before the post credits was the uh, Dog Days Are Over, like getting a 2000 song that they're playing. Everyone's celebrating, Drax dancing around. Like all the dumb little character moments that, again, we saw coming, but it's still satisfying because it was earned. Um, but once again, love the movie ending with Rocket. And I love that now that he is like accepting he's a raccoon, he like howls <laughs> like an animal yeah. at the end. And like, it's just like, oh, this is. So cool, man. Um, so then we get to see, uh, you know, the new Guardians of the Galaxy in their suits. It's one of the Yub Yub kids. It's old Black Adam. It's She's Rocket Raccoon. Magic. Yeah, exactly. She's got something going on there. Uh, somebody Groot else is, is now the size of a tank. Yeah, Groot. Big Groot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Big yeah, he's Groot. sleeping. Alpha he's sleeping. Groot, he wakes up. Oh, the fuck's he gonna fit anywhere? Craglin's there too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the little conversation they have going around the group of like, what are your favorite songs? They all have like different like eras and genres and stuff. But uh, it ending with Rocket being like, this one's special to me. Come and get your love. It's like, hell yeah, man. What a way to end this shit. Yeah. Uh, more credits. And then it's, yeah, Peter Quill eating Great breakfast. Credits. They do the, the one of my favorite things that uh, a lot of the MCU trilogies do, which is like kind of end with like a look back at all three movies. That trilogy. And, and in addition to all their other appearances, yeah, yeah, yeah. the... Um, the mm -hmm. holiday special and Thor Love and Thunder and uh, Infinity War and Endgame but love seeing all the images with the music playing just thought they did a really great mm -hmm. job there but then yeah final post credit scene was we, we get to see uh, Peter Cole and his grandfather at the uh, breakfast table uh, of course the newspaper from St. Charles, Missouri and has mm -hmm. a reference to Kevin Bacon tells all about the alien adventure he went <laughs> on uh, but it's just a you know, totally normal weird conversation of uh Peter, they want him to go cut somebody's grass or whatever. And he's like, but he's got, he's a 45 year old man. He's going to be out of the porch watching me. I think it's weird. He's like, I could tell you some stories. Well, I want to hear them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it was just a fun thing. And then the legendary Star Lord will return at the end of it, which I did not expect. Did not expect that either. Didn't expect it at all, man. And I, I just love it. I, I personally think that the way this movie ends off is like my dream of the Guardians, where it's like they're not dead. They are separated. They're, we got the um, Mantis upgrade of next time we see her, she might have these three beasts with her. Like, 
a lot of cool potential out there. And like the new team, I, it reminds me a lot of Age of Ultron ending where I don't think we're ever going to actually see right. this team in action. But I like the idea that we can fill in the gaps of like this team's going to go on adventures and do things the sure. same way that the new Avengers did, um, like Wanda and yeah, yeah, Vision yeah. and all them. And we'll see them all at Secret War. Yeah. Do you think James Gunn brings in Chris Pratt to be in the DCU at any point? 100%. I think yeah. he's going to be Lois Lane. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this you whole spot. Chris Pratt taking everybody's jobs. <laughs> um, all right. Well, there you go. Let's do what I like to call Ragu Bagu. Ragu. Bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast within a podcast that started it all called Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys. I'm one of your hosts, Greg, alongside Andy, Nick, and Tim. And this is where we rank <laughs> all. <laughs> The bad guys, the villains of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Currently, our list officially is ranked at 52. You guys inserted Kang when I wasn't here for Ant-Man Quantumania, but you didn't number him, I see. So I'm not sure what that means, if he's officially there or if, you know, was, do we need to vote? I mean, I wouldn't even have the votes, I guess, so it doesn't matter, right? Well, it's all right. Uh, here, I think... It's, it's placement is right. I don't know. These numbers just didn't. Update. Nobody just nobody in a number. I don't know how to do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> So it's the top of a, I, what I love about it, Tim, is that like my wife is a actual professional, you know what I mean? Like has a real job. Yeah. And so whenever I watch her do anything in Excel, I'm like, God, you know, magic voodoo. And then I come in and I just select them all slowly one by one and do <laughs> control V and yeah. paste them in. So there you go. <laughs> and how you feel about Jen, I feel about you. So how okay. even worse <laughs> off on that. <laughs> in the land of the blog. <laughs> all right. So we have 53 ranked villains uh, on the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you are just joining us, congratulations on making it through your first interview. Uh, we do it by tiers. So there's the S tier, A tier, all the way down to the F tier of villains in the MCU. So we start with the conversation of. What tier is uh, the high evolutionary? I want to start this one off, and I, I feel like I'm going to be outvoted on that. It's totally okay. I do think it's A tier, especially looking at the list of villains that we mm -hmm. have here that are in the A tier, which include Gore from Love and Thunder, um, Ego from Guardians 2, uh, Daddy-O and Razor Fist from Shang-Chi, and uh, Agatha Damn, Harkness and WandaVision. I, I feel like, yeah, this it should be there. And I, again, kind of simple, but I think the thematic balance of it all, of, of why he's evil bad guy but also the plot of seeing what he actually did to these animals and like the results of it all and the performance and, yeah and all of that performance i'm like i actually think he's really high but not necessarily s tier yeah excuse me i'm right there with you and the performance and the complexity of the character as being this sort of like damaged deranged almost addict cat like character i thought was really really interesting and something we hadn't seen really before in the mcu i just thought every time i, I gotta learn this actor's name but because he's been in other things right chuck way yeah. he's in uh peacemaker peacemaker right yeah. he's he plays um the, the guy. Yeah. The guy. Know. The leader. Yeah. yeah. That's the bug guy, right? He's great. Gia's friend's husband, too. Oh, he's fantastic. He's fantastic in this. He's absolutely. Gia's friend's husband? Uh, man, that's, that blew how my mind. Not, how have we not had him? Because I've heard Tim mention this story a lot about Gia's friend's husband is somebody in a movie. And they're like, oh, oh, wow. It's like all coming together. It's all coming together? Yeah. Well, mm. I would put him in the A tier as well, Tim. And I would Did put Gia him go to the wedding? What's up? Did Gia go to the wedding? Uh, I, I don't know that they had a wedding, but I was at a wedding with her friend. Oh, he and was he, supposed to go there. He didn't go because he's making a movie. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I'd put him above would Gore. You have the friend's number? Can we call the friend to call? I, him? It's, yeah, it would not. Three way, way call. Just can we get him on Game Daily? I'm trying to, to get him on on something at some point. I don't know. It's just insulting. Ask him sorry, on Kevin, can we have the one? <sighs> Here we go. It's just insulting, Nick. That for the entirety of my career and kind of funny. You drop any name I'm even remotely connected to, and I'll call him on the fucking show right here. Call you know what I mean? I'm not a fucking afraid. Yeah. Tim That's Getty's why we over have here. This. this is the house that, that that brash irresponsibility has built. Tim Getty's over there, right? He takes all his relationships. He puts them in one of those styrofoam coolers you get. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, he yeah. won't let us touch it. Puts the lid on it, and when you pull you the lid You and me off, try to touch it, it goes squeaky, squeaky. We can't touch it. You can it. hear it. Back to you guys. Back to us. I put him in uh, A tier above Gore from Thor Love, Love and Thor. Well, 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 that's not how we do it. So I, I'm fine with A tier. I'm not going to. The motion carries that he's in A tier. So let's rank, let's t well, let me walk you through A tier. At number nine, you have K Kang from Ant Man Quantumania. Uh, then He Who Remains slash the TVA from Loki. Then Wanda Agatha Hockey <laughs> from WandaVision. Loki from Avengers. Daddy O and Razor Fist from Shang-Chi. Fucking uh, Razor Fist. You ruined this ranking. Hell slash Grandmaster from Thor Ragnarok. Ego from Gar Guardians 2, a Mysterio from Far From Home, and Gore from Thor Love and Thunder. You know what? I, I'm, I'm changing my vote. 
I put it in, in S tier, which I'm already outranked there. Wow. So with that, I would say because it's above. I think it's above Kang and Ant Man. See, that's my thing. I agree. It's about, I think you guys ranked. Kang I think way it's better too high. than Kang. <clears throat> and I think yeah, even looking here, he who remains from the TVA, which I loved. Um, I loved the. T- I loved it. actually. Uh, it's around there. Look, I know he's a bad guy and he's canceled, but Kang was a very good presence in that movie. Arguably, probably the best thing about the movie. I would put him below Mysterio from Spider-Man Far From Home because I don't. Um, I think the I think the performance was there, but I didn't feel like I can't wait to see more of this character on screen to be like kind of entertained or scared by him. You know, my thing is he was one of the very few in the MCU that's actually scary. Not like oh, I get why this character should be uh, ominous or imposing on screen, but that moment where he grabs Rocket's face. And he's like squeezing it a little bit. That is a deep emotion. That like oh, yeah. evokes a very deep emotion of abuse in me. That I'm like, oh my god! Like we haven't. I, I don't think I've ever seen that. Even even Thanos, I don't think it touched on that level of darkness. And the fact that they let that actor go there, and the fact that he was like, I'll, I'll, I'll take this character there, I think makes him rank pretty highly for me. And, yeah. and Michael makes a great point. Putting Adam Warlock in that group. Because he's a bad guy for. I mean, he's beating people's asses, beating the Guardians' asses. But so he brings Elizabeth it down, Vicky. For him. Who cancels it out? Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> By that rationale, vis a vis, net neutral. Because I think he, br- I think Warlock kind of brings down the duo. We have to, we have to include the duo. Some, Greg, yeah, but if we're including the that, chair, recognizes like, uh, the man from the RGV. I think we do have to recognize yeah. the duo. I mean, Razor Fist ruined Daddio's ranking. Yeah, but I feel like even then, Kang. I feel like all the other shit that go up against him, <laughs> Quantum Mania brings that down too. Well, yeah, but Despite you guys fucked that up. You don't like Bill Murray? I wasn't here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Nobody was here. No, I wasn't here to be the voice of reason for you guys. Way over ranking Kang. What's the one you are always mad at us about, Andy? Ranking on the MCU list? Cross? Sure, whatever. Yeah, well, I thought it was a movie. Oh, uh, Thor being uh, this is my Thor. Yeah. This is my Thor. Oh, you're Kang crazy. shouldn't be this high. You're crazy. So, so where are we going here? I would say number nine. Again, I, I the way I vote is that I look for the first thing I disagree with on the list, and I immediately disagree with Kang. So I would go number nine as well. Motion cares. I'll take it. <laughs> Motion cares. <laughs> you're new. Number nine on Ragu Bagu. Top of the A, Ben. Top of the A. Is this guy <laughs> whose name is I've already forgotten. High evolutionary. Thank you. There we go. Now it's time to rank the MCU. Uh, currently, can we I, have can 40. I have, can I table you for one oh, second? Oh, table me away, Greg. Is it not? Are you not furious? Like, where rank those abs? It's the third one that like, we'll put Batista in a shirt. Adam Warlock will never take his clothes off. We already know We already know Chris Pratt's hot, but we have to show in case maybe he's not hot like in worldies. You're very welcome to <laughs> 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 Ladies, welcome back to Rate Those Abs. I, who got your list in this again? Nobody. Nobody. That's Nobody. What I'm saying. Well, here, listen, honestly, it's one of those things where I'm like, I mean, Batista's talked yeah. about it. People talk about yeah, it. I know. He's just like, man, I don't want to get bit fit for this. And I'm like, you know what? That's fine. I'll allow it just this once. But when James Gunn gets his ass over to the DC, oh my God. he better be fucking throwing steroids at his actors <laughs> is all I wanted to like they yeah. open up their lunchbox when they go to the when craft service to the table no, it's not even it's they walk pills. out the city, it's like, <laughs> 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 it's just every time they're stabbing the ass it's not, ah, yeah. you see James Gunn in, in a bush with a little dart gun <laughs> like, get jacked whoever his man is still get jacked, jacked. <laughs> I, I will say that that homie that played out of war like I fucking yacked and yacked for this though he was he got very, very big. Oh, Chris Angus saying Adam Warlock was shirtless. I don't remember he that. He got shirtless. Maybe it was yeah, the gold he got burned that kind of threw it away from me. Yeah. yeah. The gold Wait, body, like, kind of. gold. I, I go. I didn't notice that. I don't know I'm, why. I'm, That's so unfortunate. Just, yeah. Um, he looks great. But, you know, I, I, we don't have a clear cut sighting for the abs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're going to abstain from. We're going to abstain. We're abstaining, voting. everybody. That's, That's the adult thing to do, Nick. Thank you. That's good. That's real good. Uh, now we're going to rank the MCU. Currently, we have 41 titles you can see them if you're watching us right in front of us starting with endgame at number one and ending at thor dark world at 41 um a, a recent update here after great has now watched quantum mania and we took our votes in and they've been balanced out quantum mania comes in at number 24 underneath hawkeye above miss marvel uh who how who why how who, yeah for the record on that one i voted it to i wanted it to be above eternals so i had it way low i mean am i to blame for this uh, probably you are andy you what are. did I vote it for? Andy, you, what 23. The fuck? What did I vote it at? What did I vote it at? I vote, oh, Nick maybe that's... 22. Oh, above, you know what? I did, I did one of those things where I'm like, I didn't like Hawkeye. I don't think it should be this high. So let me gotcha, it. I did fair, that. Fair. I did that, was, that hate voting thing when really, like, this movie should be way down. Andy, fuck, I fucked up, Andy, Chad. before the movie started, 
you, or this interview started, you and I had a conversation about how fucking horrible the list is, and I was like, I bet someone fucked it up, and it was you. You fucked Dude, up. Dude, I, how did I, how did y'all let me do that? That's what happens on the show, y'all. We all talked about Quantum Mania. We were all time, like, this movie fucking was trash. Anytime we try to That's stop, my fault. anytime we try to stop you from doing something stupid, you say, "Well, it's going to be racist if you stop me, and we have to let you go." You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I do hold that against you. So, so yeah, the, the, this is where the list. Hey, I don't make the rule. I do Fuck. make the rules actually, but hey, we have to live by that's them. So okay, bad. there are fucking rules I'm so here. So sorry, everybody. everybody. Yeah. Um, so that's where the list. We is. should do a, one day a fun. One day we got to snaps, and we have to do it all over. We got to figure that out. We got to. Can figure we make it sure out. that Andy goes to dust and then never comes back? Damn. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> where the hell are we gonna put? Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three on this list. Mr. and Mrs. Cortez, list. he just disappeared. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> These are those guys that are. I'll start, start this one like... off as well. Um, here we are. I, I feel like I would put this one potentially higher than some of the titles um, that I'm about to say here, but this is definitively the lowest of the Guardians to me. I do think that it's very close to Shang Chi, but I think it edges it out uh, in terms of how high quality the character moments and all that stuff are, and I think that. As a trilogy, this is the best trilogy in MCU and very consistent. James Gunn crushed it, so I'd put it at number fourteen. Mm. I'm also likely to blame for Love and Thunder being so high because I just oh. I just laughed so hard at that freaking. I, the ghost. Those, I, I mean, no, I laughed so freaking hard at Stormbreaker and <sighs> and Boy, Mjolnir. It's just, it's just <laughs> jealous. Just a jet- so I'm sorry for that lover. again. A lot of apologies for me here today. I, I ruined a great movie watching experience by not bringing the pickle twang. That's on me as well. Um, I would have to put this above Love and Thunder underneath Shang-Chi. So at 15. Yes. Is that right? Would you like the floor or shall I go next? I'll, I think I'll be short and sweet and just stick with where I thought before. Because I think our top of the list is pretty solid, right? So based on that, I think, as I said, I think I like Guardians uh, 1. Or I'm sorry, Guardians 2, then Guardians 3, then Guardians 1. So I would put it, I'd vote for 13, putting it above Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Mm. Uh, well, I think it's going to be at 14 now, right? But I would put it at 14. There you go. Uh, I, think, I think Guardians of the Galaxy 1 is just a, a well more balanced movie and a lot uh, a lot more compelling as far as some of the humor and the tensions are concerned. I think this was too loose. So but I liked it a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say right now, you guys are going to reg- like look at this movie when Guardians 4 comes out, the new Guardians, and you guys are going to be like, I can't believe we put it so low. It's, it's so much better than we remember. Well, like, thankfully. Wh- wh- which happened with Guardians 2. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, though, looking at this list, I think everything, most things above it, they're just really damn good. Wait, that's not what happened with Guardians 2, right? Weren't we all pretty high on Guardians 2? Yeah, it's number I mean, eight no on the list. No it's eight on our list. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally, we can see it right here. It's I really, that, really high I on our list. I said that and saw it on eight, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, but like you guys remembered it less fondly than, than I guess it was. Well, no, ranked. to be fair, when we had watched it again recently, we were yeah. like, oh, shit. Yeah, we, I, it, it got way better. Yeah. And I, in context, it is a really, really good movie. So there, that is true, Kevin. I think I wanted to put it much higher. Is what happened there with the, with Volume Two? And we can't beat anything above it, though. Come on. Uh, so he's, I just want to say, so here it is. It's number fourteen. Um, when it comes to interview, when it comes to the list, like I know everyone has opinions on this. That's how this works. But the value of this list and the reason that it works, even though it looks like a disaster, is if we just re rank and we're just like, what do we all think right now? And like, and have it. That's us thinking. What do we yeah. think about the movie as opposed to week to week us having this conversation? Oh, I'm it's f- where we're at. In the moment, right? Yeah, I, yeah, just, yeah. I, I just, I just, I just want people to understand that because sometimes they're like, I get a lot of feedback on on Reddit or Twitter where I see it, and like, it seems like people don't get that. Where it's like, yeah, how we feel about these movies evolves and changes over time. That's but the fun conversation. That's the fun. None conversation. of this matters. The None list doesn't matter. 100%. This is for yeah. fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if we were to re-rank them, I, I wouldn't just want to oh, let's fucking re-rank them. I would be like, we're starting again. Than- Thanos <laughs> snap, and we watch all forty movies in a r- week in a row again. The, again, see how long this writer strike goes, and if there's a huge, okay, honestly, if there's a huge honestly, thing, and we need 43 weeks of content. Hey, you know what? You Call up Gary and tell him to draw it out a little bit. You know what I mean? So they just fist bumped for audio listeners. Yes, they did. And you know what? I have another announcement to make here. Oh my! All right, God. about next week's in review. Okay, next week's in review. It might be time for a redemption, everyone. All right, we have Fast Ten coming out yeah. in two weeks. Yep. All right. There's a lot of, been a lot of back and forth. I've been talking to some people here. I've been thinking. I was like, the plan was Fast Nine. We're gonna rewatch it. We haven't rewatched it since it first came out. That is now entirely optional for us. All right. Next week we will be rewatching Fast Five, <gasps> aka one of the most popular MCU in review, or, or sorry, in review episodes. One of the most popular kind of funny videos we've ever made. Yeah. Also, 
One of the biggest regrets of one Nick Scarpino. Huge regret for me. Why, why is that? I came into the room with the wrong energy, and I started analyzing a film that has no business being analyzed <laughs> uh, in the way that I decided to critique it, i.e., uh, I, I tried to kind of bring a, a sense of analyzing it like a real film, and these are Fast and Furious movies. You got you to gotta stow that shit at the door, and for whatever reason, I got super defensive on that one. So I'm very excited to rewatch this, re-review it, and fucking stuff it down your throats again. <laughs> Because this movie is a piece of shit. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Will Will Nick uh, no, be I'm redeemed, gonna go or will he have the same opinion? Which is totally fair. We'll see what happens. We're rewatching Fast Five, everybody. I hope you do it as well. And next week we're gonna do that, and then Fast Ten <laughs> the following week. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm probably gonna watch Fast Nine myself, just because uh, I've only seen it once, which is pretty wild. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure had a great time. Go watch Guardians Three in theaters. Let us know in the comments below what you think about it what you think of our list how excited you are to watch fast five again and anything else you want to say every time i say hey just do some engagement do some comments people do and i read them and i see a whole bunch of fun little things what people are eating for breakfast what they're planning to do this you know way all I, that stuff you know what i like saying uh, chat with me in the comments oh chat Let's away chat. we'll be replying to you chat away yeah. chat away andy will chat away chat away chat away chat away meryl chat away meryl have a marvelous day chat away